Hello, everyone. It is Saturday night, and that means it's time for the Weekly Dig. For anyone new to the stream, this is a live show where we dig into anime old and new. I'm Brent. <clears throat> These are my wonderful co-hosts, John. Say hi, John. Bon bonwa, everyone. Hi, John. And Steve. Hola, Steve. Hello. <laughs> and we are here to talk about the anime season, actually. So, yeah, it is, it is time for anime. I'm actually going to readjust things a little bit because we have, we've got some overlapping here on Steve. Whoops. Mm. That's not what I want to do. I'm up here Can now. You? What did I do? Steve's wearing an, Steve has his there anime hat on. There <laughs> we go. I clicked on the wrong button. There we go. So Steve is now not being chopped off by the, ah. the art up there. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, Our 10-hour is... odyssey. Of new <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can still see out of my right eye. There okay. we go. Yeah. It's all okay. good. Um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about uh, uh, the new anime airing this season in Japan, the winter 2021 to 2022 season. Um, as usual, so we watched the first episode of each of these anime. Um, if more episodes were out, we did not push forward. We just watched episodes one. Uh, we skipped some things that were obviously like aimed at little children. Uh, a few things that just weren't available. There were one or two like um, like three minute ONAs that we, we couldn't track down. Um, so we tried, but we're gonna get through um, I think twenty five ish anime here tonight, and we are gonna start with as you can tell down there a Kebby's sailor uniform, which yes. for me wins the season's award for uh, most beautiful background art. Um, because holy smokes, this anime is <clears throat> gorgeous. Yeah, it, it truly is. I, when it, you know, I'd obviously seen others before coming up to that point, so I, I was kind of getting like that eye fatigue, you know, your eye yeah. kind of is, you know, you know, flickers a little bit. It's a little um, droopy, your left arm hurts, no, you're it's, having yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, <laughs> Um, I, I swear I wasn't doing okay. Um, anyway, so... <laughs> Anyway, um, but but when I saw this, and it just cuts to that just that first scene where she's just right. You don't really even see her. I think you see her foot, right? Yeah, yeah. In in, in, in that one moment, you're just like, this is going to look beautiful because yeah. everything about it, and it's just her foot, mm -hmm. and it's just like, and 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 the and the background behind it, and it's just like, okay, I I need yep. to to really savor this. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. this is going to be nice. Yep. Um, this is anime by uh, Cloverworks. A uh, studio that also did Hanasako Iroha, a um, bunch of other uh, anime where they really focused down. Um, for a long time, I've thought that Cloverworks um, did a lot of anime that kind of feels a lot like Kyoto Animation works. Like, they do a lot of that, you know, detailed backgrounds, very moe characters. Uh, and I feel like with this show, they've absolutely stepped it up to where, like, this feels like a Kyoto Animation show. Um, yeah. Just the level of detail, the level of uh, focus on characters um, is just lovely. Um, uh, and let's talk a little bit about <laughs> character design. Um, this is one of the things that does kind of leap out at this, uh, about this, is just the, the way the characters, um, the, the, boy, those are some big eyes. Um, yeah. I'm an anime fan, but boy, those are some big eyes. Um, and so it's a little off-putting initially, um, but definitely something that I, I kind of, I got used to. Yeah. Well, and certainly what, what I discussed with you and, and, you know, the idea that the large eyes, they are on a downward sort of tilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that it's not just sort of a flat lower lid and then all up or yeah. all completely around. It's like there is a slightly almost, to me, it looked like a slightly sad element or, or maybe it's a serious element mm -hmm. where you're not yeah. getting kind of a goofy kind of look out of this, even though the, the design of the faces from the side, the pronounced nose kind of lower face is different. Mm -hmm. You don't get a sense of comedy out of it. No. You get a sense of seriousness out of it. Mm -hmm. And not in a serious bad way, but you yeah. know what I mean? It's just my, my aesthetic for it is like, I really see where you're going. I see how you're dialing this in to, mm -hmm. to convey with no words whatsoever that this is going to be this serious, interesting journey. Yeah. Um, you know, they really, and that's, I, I agree. It's like, it feels very much like a kill Annie because it feels really like the story is lovingly crafted Yeah. in a way that gives you the appreciation of how they've 
worked to get the background to work with what's going on in the foreground to work with the, how the story is going and the integration of all the characters and their interactions mm -hmm. um it's also a very interesting story yeah no, gosh all the details that jeez yeah um yeah <laughs> with the fabric store here um it's also interesting because of the kind of premise of the story it's about a girl entering middle school um and um she gets to wear a seifuku uh, sailor uniform for the first time um and apparently and, and she's uh she's way out in the six uh, i think they, they mentioned that she's been the she's the only girl in her grade um yeah. you know for, for a long time uh all throughout elementary school and so now she gets a chance to actually wear a school uniform because typically in elementary schools you don't have a school uniform um and apparently like her mom is making her school uniform i had no idea this was a thing it does make sense but apparently like in a lot of places you know as long as as long as the uniform um, uh, complies with these standards, it doesn't have right. to come from one particular company. Um, and so her mom is clearly a seamstress. She is making her daughter's uh, seifuku. Um, and that's episode one. <laughs> episode one yeah. is basically just making the seifuku and her putting it on um, and her kind of getting used to, to that. So it's, a, it's a, again, a very kyoan kind of very slice of life-ish kind of a story. Heartwarming. Very Definitely heartwarming. heartwarming. Yes. Very heartwarming. You um, know, very connected. Mom school. I'm going to go to mom school. Yeah. I'm going to finally get to wear this uniform. My mother hand makes it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. wow. I feel touched by this. Absolutely. And and it deals and, and it deals with with in a very good way the anxiety of going to a new place, being excited yeah. and going to a new place and wondering if you're going to make new friends mm -hmm. and if you're going to be out of out of place. And then you go in and you find. You make a new friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I love the the quiet drama of this, or the, the, the kind of the low key drama of this, where yeah. you know nothing feels like it's you know, anyone's going to fall apart. You know, um, spoiler alert. You know, no one gets hit by truck coon in in this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not that kind of a drama. It's it's um, but it's more just that. Um, everyday drama of am I going to be accepted? Am I am I not? And then the fact that they're kind of dealing with that moment by moment throughout the episode um, uh, gave me like a, a lot of of hope for for this series as the story progresses that it's going to be about just these little low key slice of life moments. Yeah, um, which is yeah. really cool. Um, lovingly rendered. I am curious whether this is going to turn into like a shoujo eye direction, a girl's love direction. Um, there is a little bit of a hint of that in terms of how they, how they present the characters. Like there's a lot of kind of um, uh, great focus on the blonde haired girl. I don't know. Um, no, I, was tell, say, I, I have hope that this is, it's, this is the key to her integration into mm -hmm. school yeah. she stands out as being the the sailor uniform wearing girl and that could put her on the sort of the outside of the circle mm -hmm. but now she's got someone that she can be at least the solo friend mm -hmm. and that that will be like how other friends accrete to her yeah. but mm -hmm. i certainly welcome to see how they're going to develop that and yeah you know if it goes that direction fine mm -hmm. i i would yep. like to see it just develop However, if they could develop it naturally for a show yeah, that's scripted yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's, they're not real people. Yeah, the, the strawberry panic, this is not. So, <laughs> it, you know. no. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see if they're going to be able to craft this and make make the relationships feel lived in and real. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I welcome yeah. to see how they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. By the way, the, the younger sister is adorable. Yes, yeah. she absolutely is. Great job with her. Yeah. Um, Cool. Uh, moving on to Q, um, mm. which is, I'm I'm just gonna say it. Um, actually, gotta fast forward here a little bit because some of the the, the opening is. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> it's an idol anime with voice actors. Yeah. That that's exactly what it is. It is the the pop idol anime format applied to. Um, uh, to voice actors, and boy, there are a lot of them. Um, we'll see if we can get a shot of all of the girls here. 
because well, you can't like, have an idol show without all idols. Exactly. Um, <laughs> say you idols, but still idols. <laughs> yeah, I think there are fifteen or sixteen of them. Something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. Yeah. Seventeen actually. Seventeen. 17. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> and you're introduced to like all of them in this episode. Um, and, he, and that's the thing. It's like if you heard pop idols with voice actors. And that appeals to you. This is this will live that exactly to, to that. If that doesn't appeal to you, I don't think this is gonna you know, yeah, make you fall in love I, with it. Well, here's the, the odd thing for me was that I normally don't watch exactly to that point. I don't watch idol shows. I just I'm, they're just not interesting to me. Yeah. But the first episode, I'm curious to go past the first episode simply mm-hmm. because, um, you know, I have a you know for those of you in chat land who don't know. Uh, I used to work in theater mm. before COVID. So, and actually a Shakespeare theater, which yeah. is key on this first <laughs> episode because they do a scene from Hamlet mm-hmm. and um, they have all the girls do the, the, read the, read the, read the parts. And um, so it kind of got my attention and in a way that they did the audition correctly. If that oh, makes okay. sense. Interesting. Um, so ahead. when you're doing, when you're doing a line read like that, they, that's, and you're, and you're auditioning for characters, it's very, similar to what i'm what i've experienced so i was kind of cool. like i was like i was like oh okay that's kind of cool but but as you say this is an idol show so if you're not so if you don't have a connection to it like i do mm. i think that's the only reason why i i, I am going to pursue it right. is because of because of that one connection but it is an idol show now if you like idol shows good good then you sh- will probably enjoy this yeah. I, I don't say anything mm-hmm. there, there's nothing wrong here yeah absolutely well, just the, the cover art to it. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. is the idol show format mm-hmm. where every girl's got a quirky look. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. So that you can identify one person to the next by like what their hat is, what, you know, that tells you what kind of what their personality is going to be like. So it's not going to break any fresh, you know, ground <laughs> with right. like how they're presenting the look. Mm-hmm. Um, what, I thought was interesting is the idea. There's been other stuff that talked about Seiyu. Um, one that was very interesting, a sister worked in a certain industry and got her little sister into doing voiceovers for mm. a certain industry. And then mm. like, that was a weird kind of premise, but, mm. and then some other ones that I had seen that deal with Seiyu stuff. So I've never seen like an ensemble cast mm. of, right. of Seiyu. And it, I mean, to me, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're not just going to be in there to be a voice actress. Your mm-hmm. agency presumably will want you to do singing and dancing and mm-hmm. presenting and being at you know various signing events and handshake events and all this yeah. other stuff. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense to me. I'm kind of surprised that it's all been on the idol side mm-hmm. and not from like, oh, we'll start with the voice actress side. Mm-hmm. And it leads you to the, basically the same end. But yeah. at least this, for me, it's like, ah, okay. I, you know, that seems like yeah. an interesting slant on this. Seems like an interesting yeah. take. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, the animation is very clean and effective. Like, they're standing around microphones, so there's not a huge amount to, like, animate yeah. here. Um, it's solid. The, the yeah. character is clean. The character <laughs> models are clean. Right. Like, mm-hmm. um, and the one thing they did at the beginning to kind of show off, I think, also what's going on there, um, it opens with a... Uh, Castle in the Sky knockoff anime, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, of these, uh, the, the boy and the girl. Um, and uh, it's this very nicely animated action sequence. Um, yeah. You know, quite a bit going on, a lot of movement, a lot of action. Um, so clearly the studio is, like, capable of that. You're not shying away from that. It's just, again, girls standing around microphones or standing around with, with scripts. There's just not much to move. Um, so hopefully we'll see some, uh, some, some fun stuff from there in the future. Uh, Here's the question, though. If we do have a singing segment, will it be CG? Mm. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, that's like Love Live. It, you know, mm-hmm. once they get into the singing, it's full on CG. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it all depends on budget. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't. I don't get yeah. the sense that this is low budget. I mean, because the quality of what's done is really pretty solid. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? It's like, it might just be easier to just keep it in this format mm-hmm. and not mess with that. So yeah. we really, we'll mm-hmm. see. And, uh, and who knows when that's going to happen. Right. Um, and it's one episode of two, where... episode three, you know, yeah. how far in is it mm-hmm. going to get? 
if they do a total of like three singing segments over the course of the entire series, it might be like, well, just 2D it, right? Like it's not worth yeah. modeling up all the characters. Who knows? Right. Just curious. Yeah. Unless uh, they go to nationals. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go there. Wrong. We'll, we'll, Wrong. we'll get there. Wrong. Um, moving on um, alphabetically, uh, we're going to, oh, not about that one. That one did not actually uh, become available. Um, we're going to talk about Fantasia Sango Realm of Legends. Um, which is a, an adaptation of uh, a video game. Very much an adaptation of a video game. Um, this is uh, basically uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms crossed with uh, Journey to the West, crossed with like, all of those classic Chinese fairy tales, um, sort of mashed up into a big old uh, action anime kind of premise. Um, see if I can get a, a, a good shot of this. Um, yeah, character designs are like very, again, very video game. A uh, Taiwanese video game, actually. Yep. Um, and so this is an adaptation of that storyline of them fighting monsters with various powers. Um, I mean, here's the thing. We've talked about this in the, in the past. Often, when, if a video game gets sufficiently successful, one of the things they kind of give to the fans is an anime adaptation. Like, okay, we're going to throw some money at an anime adaptation, so an anime now exists of this thing, and so you can watch an anime version. It's not meant to be the most amazing thing in the world. It's just meant to be, you know, here's an anime of the series. This is not really the intended format of this medium, or of this yeah. story. Um, and that is very much what this feels like. It's a very work-a-day, here's some characters fighting things, the animation is there's not a big budget here um yeah. it's just vaguely chinese-esque character designs in a fantasy world of fighting monsters um well i i pointed out in one scene in particular mm -hmm. that the animation style was entirely consistent with like gi joe animation <laughs> yeah. yeah where it's mm -hmm. it's it's got the movement it's mm -hmm. it's animated so yeah. they're doing things. Things are happening, and, but it's just not. It's not any of it done in like amazing enough detail for backgrounds for character designs necessarily. And mm -hmm. the fights are competent. Yeah, I would not yeah. certainly say yeah. that they mm -hmm. they dumped budget on like okay, you know, we're gonna not go so detail with everything else, but we're gonna make the fights amazing. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, you know, God of High School comes to mind. Where it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the backgrounds and stuff were CG and, and was okay, and the character models were okay, but the fight scenes were fantastic. Mm -hmm. This, it's giving the fans the anime they want of their mm -hmm. of their game, and that's yep. good on if you. Mm -hmm. If you if you play the game, you're gonna like it. Um, yeah. If yeah. you're if 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 you are a fantasy anime, this is probably one of many. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Not bad. Not great. Not bad. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't stand alone without knowing there's a game franchise. It doesn't mm -hmm. do anything that's so remarkable yeah. that yeah. I would go off and say yeah. this is really this is you know the highlight of the fantasy fighting <laughs> demons <laughs> genre. You're, you're mm -hmm. gonna need this. Right. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, competent is a perfect word for it, John. Yeah. yeah it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is exactly that. Yeah. Um. Uh, we also got the required by law mm -hmm. um, uh, sports anime of this season, uh, Futsal Boys, um, uh, which is about yeah, futsal, which is a version of soccer. Um, it's a five-on-five -five sort of, not quite arena-based, but kind of, you know. Uh, sort of, it yeah. sounded like the yeah, description. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, this is arena-based, I, I thought. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's... Um, but in a smaller, you know, area than typical soccer. Yeah. Um, and Which I only learned that today, thanks to you, Brent. I yeah, had I no idea this thing was a thing. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, oh. Um, yeah, and so it is, it is the story of um, a team of five boys, uh, high school boys, who are all coming together to, to play futsal. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it hits all the notes. Um, it has a... Um, pretty high animation budget. Um, certainly, uh, you know, everything there is very uh, cleanly expressed. 
Um, yes. It is a little more over the top than some 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 ones. You know, they they'll have like named attacks. You know, um, right. kick of dragon fire or whatever. Yeah, it was like dragon storm god. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there. Um, I've never been to a soccer game and seen that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've seen a lot of falling down and, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, none of that Flowers. here. Oh, none of that here. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, if you like Shaolin soccer, there's a little bit of that here. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. One thing I did really appreciate about this series, though, is that it does not have, um, well, well, you definitely have the, the energetic you know, boy and the uh, cool, competent older boy. Um, it's not to an extreme. Um, so, like, the, the energetic boy is not a complete effing idiot. Uh, you <laughs> not know. a spaz. <laughs> yeah. spaz. Well, um, no, he is kind of a spaz. He's kind of a complete yeah. idiot. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and the, the older boy is still, like, <laughs> he's still, like, actually, into, you know, talks to other people and actually, like, has a, a, a life. Um, he is not just entirely focused on soccer for, for everything he does. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's a little more grounded in that way, which I, I appreciated. Um, I find it a little more appealing uh, for that reason. Right. Um, yeah. I, I thought that the animation was better than average. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that's what actually kept my interest was mm -hmm. the animation. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not a, as, as many will attest, I'm not a sports anime person. Mm -hmm. But but it held my interest, and it was it was fine enough to, to, to get through it. And if you are a sports anime, this is it's it, to me it's just kind of the trope, and you know it does the thing for you. Mm -hmm. And it, and you know will they go to nationals? And yeah, <clears throat> you know will the guy who's trying to want who loves the game but is not any good at it will he develop? You know of mm -hmm. course he will. But, you know, there's always the question at the beginning: Will he make the winning, winning goal, goal at nationals yeah. <laughs> with the dragon fire kick? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Steve. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm most sports anime just kind of, yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, I, I did, I enjoyed the the clean lines of a lot of what they were doing with this. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I thought the certainly a lot of the backgrounds weren't particularly interesting. Yeah. Like when they're mm -hmm. practicing the futsal thing, they're practicing in like a big cage match. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's yeah. like there's not really anything you could do with that. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's like mm -hmm. the, a, a soccer pitch kind of looks. You got white lines <laughs> and grass. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they're in a big cage thing where it's like mm -hmm. there's not a lot you can do with that. Yeah. So that they, you know, I think that helps a lot to get mm -hmm. the footwork. At one point, the the cool senpai guy, mm -hmm. they are sort of practicing, and he's doing his footwork with the foot yeah. side ball, yeah. mm -hmm. and it is snappy. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a very snappy piece where he's doing the footwork. And it's like, I was impressed by that because you could have run it like, you know, a little slower and just, that wasn't the focus of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. He's just there while they're all having a conversation. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like, I appreciated that they were, they were doing this at that speed because that mm -hmm. took some technical er effort to do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I would welcome other people's opinions on is this worth all the way through to nationals or is this you know if you're a foot and salt fan then this is really where you're going to want to go otherwise you know appreciate it for what it is and one episode's good yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um it is hard when you're like not as much i will also say um one nice thing about it being foot soul is that if you've seen like multiple sports anime multiple soccer anime foot soul does add that extra like spice to it of seeing how futsal is different from ordinary soccer, right. um, and the the terminology is different, so it does add that variety to the experience. So that also might be a reason to, to come in. Um, but yeah, that, that's futsal boys. Um, let us move on to another one of the uh, longer titles of the series, uh, of the of the season, the Genius Prince's Guide: Raising a Nation Out of Debt. <laughs> um, which uh, yeah. Um, uh, good old Universal. Um, so this is, and I don't think we have a lot of information here about, um, or they don't talk, as I recall, in the episode about the Isekai aspect of the story. Um, yeah, that's kind of a little a little lacking. Yeah, <laughs> like how did he of, get there? Yeah, uh, unknown. 
Which again, in, in fairness, I would ra- I'd rather this than three episodes of him reincarnating and all of the you know them dragging all of that out. Um, but yeah, I was, I was kind of kind of curious about that. Um, basic idea is that the uh, the main character is a hard to find a, sh- a shot of him. There we go. Um, is the the ruler of a medieval nation, um, and he is uh, well, it is a very poor nation. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And he is trying to figure out ways of dealing with that, and he kind of um, can't lose for winning, if you will, uh, yeah. where everything he tries to do to kind of um, um, negotiate something where, like, they can default on a loan, for example, then just ends up succeeding wildly so he can't default on the loan, that kind of idea. Um, but this dealing more with uh, war on fighting, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, because um, the episode is is more about this this uh, battle they fight and the strategy of going on with that. And for an anime that clearly does not have a massive budget for fight scenes, um, they did some kind of fun things here with uh, just like little tokens moving around to indicate the various characters or the various soldiers. Um, yeah, budget on this is not high, um, but it's definitely more of a strategic, um, you know, sort of. How does the character figure his way out of this scenario anime as opposed to a, an action story? Um, but kind of a, a neat premise that I, I found to be a, a, um, I think it's more of a, a premise series. You know, if, if you if you like this idea right. and watching that, um, it, it appeals. Well, it comes hot on the heels of uh, of yeah, how a realist way. hero rebuilt the kingdom, mm, mm-hmm. which was. Uh, uh, they just launched the second season this mm. season. So it was last season they did this, so that when this one popped up, I was like, wait a minute, this is like the same series? <laughs> I, I thought yeah. so too. I was like, no, <laughs> it's so not too. the same series. And mm. Realist Rebuilt the Kingdom, they do address how he gets there. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so I'm curious as to why this one started us off that it mm. it doesn't it, there does, it doesn't seem to be an isekai. You just really seem to be watching some mm prince who's taken over a kingdom mm-hmm. doing a thing fail uh, uh, succeed at failing or <laughs> fail at succeeding i don't know <laughs> yeah. um but you know what i mean it's it's i i'm fail, fail. curious to see how they're going to address things as they go forward because yeah. i i pointed out when we were watching it like budget restrictions being what they are looking across an open plain where there are two armies gathered there's a large gray streak of stuff with a flag sticking out of it that's yeah. their side mm-hmm. and the other side is a large gray streak with a flag and it's like huh yeah <laughs> at a distance i suppose that's what an army looks like on the field it's just a blob of thing but it's still an interesting savings yeah. on, <laughs> on what you're doing yeah um the strategy uh, yeah, I, I welcome to see how this the strategy goes because I did like the sort of chess piece board movement stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's when you don't have a good budget, that is an excellent way to represent what you're trying to get across. Yeah. And it's it's actually nicer to follow mm-hmm. because then you're not bogged down with like this knight's fighting that knight and this pikeman's yeah. doing this. It's like so there's a lot to be said for, oh no, now we can just talk about the large strategic maneuvering. I'm like, okay, I got you. I can see how that looks. that's nicer. That's an interesting take. Yeah. Um, Steve? Steve? It was a thing. <laughs> 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 um, it was a thing. I, I kind of just, <clears throat> it, 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 I'll be honest. I kind of sleepwalked through that one. Um, I, 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 I got the premise. I got it. I sat there. I said, okay. Because mm-hmm. I, I had the confusion of, are we doing this again? Yeah. you know from the, you know rebuilt and um <clears throat> but then when it wasn't i was like okay i'll settle back and i was like okay mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. um i'm gonna go play civilization now yeah. <laughs> um, and do some grand strategy there yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I did like <clears throat> the, um when they focus down on some of the combat mm-hmm. there's a particular part where his yep associate um they they surprise attack mm-hmm. yeah and it it is unexpected endings <laughs> yeah. it's like wow okay yep. they went there that's it's pretty impressive i was i was amazed and, and to that point i was relieved that the strategy was 
um, made sense. Um, yes. You know, both in the battle and after the battle, it wasn't like, uh, and we've talked about this before, there's some anime where, you know, we're going to do things and somebody comes up with this brilliant idea of a wedge formation. It's yeah. like, that's been around. Like, they probably know what that is. Um, so there's not that kind of sophomoric, you know, idea of I've, I've invented this, this amazing thing. Um, so at least that kind of, that, that worked for me. Kind of well, and, and what we had discussed during it as well is like, you know, here we have foot soldiers. Yeah. What about cavalry? What about archers? Mm -hmm. And they, yep, they not a hundred percent addressed it, mm -hmm. but like a good 90% they addressed it. Cause it's like, Oh, this is part of strategy. Mm -hmm. Just wait. Yep. Just yep. wait for what's going on. Wait, see how this develops. And then you're going to get a little payoff out of this. And it's like, okay, you know, yeah. I, I will give them props again. I will give them props for doing what they did with what they had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to keep watching. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. got enough there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Steve's going to keep playing Civ. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, moving on from that to another video game uh, adaptation. Uh, let's talk a bit about uh, Girls Frontline. Jeez, hold on. Um, having some weird issues with the size of these uh, these these things. Um, oh uh, wow! <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, for some reason, it's not not allowing that. So, Girls Frontline um, again, adaptation of a mobile game, uh, sort of uh, um, of robot girls in the future fighting each other and blowing each other up. That's basically what it is. Um, and so this feels very much like, okay, um, you know, let's take all of these cute girls in battle maid outfits uh, or various other kind of weird outfits and, um, and just give them guns and have them fight each other. Um, that's basically what the entire thing is. Um, and again, if the idea of battle maids with guns shooting at each other appeals to you, like that is very much what this is. Um, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I did not realize um, that, uh, that John helped me with is that uh, the attention to detail on the actual weaponry is quite high. I, yeah. Actually, I was going to talk about yeah. that. Yeah, go yeah. for it. Um, no, what I was going to say was that the animation for this was is is the top seller for this, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> the the way that they address the, the weaponry in this is that you can actually see the function. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you don't really get that a lot. It's it's no. more along the lines of, hey, we see the finger move and the beam of light comes out. So, <laughs> so you know, <laughs> it, you know, for this, it's it's more along the lines if um, you know you're more familiar with firearms or things like that, then you you're going to notice more things that happen here that yeah. are mechanical and um, the you know that are just a little bit more realistic, yeah. which helped me to not turn this off because <clears throat> I I am I'm. You know, watching the okay, um, the premise of creating armies. I mean, think about this: what if the Pentagon created a woman army of of <laughs> fighting Robots. robot maids? Mm -hmm. And you know, we, would they really put them into French maid outfits, or we, would they put them into? You let, know, let's be honest. Uh, like this must have bikinis. come from Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's very much a Japanese, yeah. So, you know, it's so you kind of have to get past that. You have mm -hmm. to get past it. If you can get past that, then you definitely watch this and yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I, I will say that movement was great. Mm -hmm. uh, the mechanics was great. The animation was great. And there seemed to be, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, there seemed to be actual attention to unit movement. Mm. Small, small unit movement. Did, did you notice yes. that? Yes, I mean the way yeah. they deployed yeah. the various um, support units. Mm -hmm. That right. some yeah. of the support units were grenade and small arm heavy mm -hmm. versus machine gun versus like reach out kind of K forty three K mm -hmm. uh, you know and uh, K ninety eight yeah. kind of little bit more distant reach. So they had a good idea about you know where you're going to place tactically mm -hmm. units for close quarters combat versus like a little bit more of a distance reach. Okay. Um, right, yeah. So they did a good job of that. And I pointed out to Brent, um, there's a particular scene with battle maids and there's there's a lot of active movement mm -hmm. and you get uh, some distracting fire. Yeah. And it's not very accurate distracting fire. Mm. And it's like the point being that they have these high powered guns with with rifle, you know, s you know scopes on the rifles. Mm -hmm. 
and suppressors. And that when you have time to set up a rifle that has reach for sniping, you have to adjust for the way that the, the actual suppressor alters the trajectory of the round. Mm. Right? And that they actually kind of accounted for that because the person firing it was on the move, did not have time to set up and adjust windage and drop. Even though you know the distance wasn't that huge, you still do have enough drift on that as a result of the suppressor that kind of like alters how well you can hit. Okay. And they accounted for that. Yeah. Right. Um, and and it's and it's that and it's cool. nice to yeah, well it's it's cool and also it's nice to have something where it's not like everyone just can like go midair and just do the gun kind of thing. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And er- and everything's a headshot, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um yeah, there, there 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 appears to be like thought behind all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yes. That said, this is an anime where they fight um, um, maids with guns under their skirts, where they like literally lift their yeah. skirts and guns pop out and like <laughs> shoot people. Um, so there <laughs> is an ammunition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so th- th- yeah, there's absolutely that kind of absurd zone. That you have to just, okay, we're just accepting this premise. Um, but within that, well, like, and, as I, yeah. and as I pointed out too, it's like the the bad guys. Yeah, whoever yeah. they are, mm-hmm. um, that they, they don't focus as much on the weapons as mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. good guy team. Yeah. Your good guy team, True. they're they're calling each other by the weapons they prefer. Mm-hmm. There's like the M4A1. Mm-hmm. There's the M16 or the AR15. Mm-hmm. So it's like the girls on the team that we're rooting for, presumably, mm-hmm. is they you have detail on them. Mm-hmm. The other side, the combat maids, there is no weapon that. Mm-hmm. pops out like that mm-hmm. the yeah. the other foot soldiers that are walking along have like star trekish like plasma <laughs> rifles yeah it's it's not a thing mm-hmm. but it's like so that's interesting to see how their focus for budget attention is mm-hmm. on a very narrow yeah. group of people where it's like okay we're gonna really throw it at that and i have no doubt you're probably gonna there's probably gonna be an enemy that's going to be mm. a focus character yep. where they will have a specific type of weapon, like a mm. Barrett 50 caliber yeah. sniper rifle. And yeah. it'll be very detailed, but only that character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that, again, that, as, a, as a game adaptation, you know what I mean? That's, that's completely legit. Yeah. You know, if that's the focus of, of Girls Frontline for the game, it's about the weaponage and how you customize and do stuff, mm-hmm. then this is absolutely the, the gun otaku <laughs> zone. Yep. You know, they're right. Like, Totally happy with it. Absolutely. Um, yep. Totally up for that. Um, so yeah, that is just kind of what that is. Um, cool. Um, let us move on from there to a show that was actually kind of interesting to me. Um, in the land of Leodal or Leodale or something along yep. those lines. Not exactly sure how to pronounce that. Um, and because um, it starts quite oddly. Um, it starts with power going out in a city um and then a an elf girl waking up in a in a, in a tavern bed um and then a cute opening credit sequence um and um yeah it's it's, it's a, a little confusing um come to find out and you know, sort of spoiler alert um for all this um she is now in an mmo uh that she used to play um, but she is now physically in the MMO, and that is interesting because she used to be confined to a hospital bed. And the implication slash belief of what's going on here is that she died. Um, uh, it's not like explicitly established in the anime, but that's kind of what she's assuming happened. Um, because now she is literally living in this, uh, uh, this fantasy world. Um, and it's basically just about her just kind of establishing herself and figuring out what's going on um, and uh, kind of resetting all the different things that happened to her um, and going back to all of the, the things that she set up when she was this character in this MMO. Um, so the, like the pacing of this is, is pretty, pretty um, steady. Um, like there's not a yeah. huge amount that happens in the episode. It's more just kind of her orienting herself. Um, but it's definitely more um, upbeat. I would say than a, a lot of the shows, um, especially given that premise. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and she's just kind of getting used to things. And there's actually a lot of, we were talking about this, there's actually a, a lot of variation in sort of uh, character design art style, um, yeah. which reminded me more of like 90s anime, where they're much more willing to kind of jump into super deformed mode and all sorts of stuff. Obviously, they still do that in, in, in times. But this felt, you know, um, more in line with, with old school sort of 90s anime. Um, I was just kind of willing to be a little more serious, a little more goofy at times. Um, and it worked. I mean, it worked, it's yeah, not absolutely. jarring. It yeah. worked. It was, you know, it, 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 it set out what it uh, was trying to do. It did, it did well. Mm -hmm. huh? Totally. <laughs> um, definitely a, a sort of a clean art aesthetic in terms yeah. of character designs and, and what you see in the world. Um, uh, uh, budget is sort of like on the high end of moderate. You know, perfectly acceptable, perfect, perfectly good for what sure. we see. Nothing too crazy. Um, but it's kind of hard to figure out. Like, I, I ended the episode still, like, very much enjoying myself, but I still didn't quite have a grip on what the show was. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that, that's kind of where I am. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> to that, I treated the show, I mean, you know, obviously it's first episode, but it, and so it's about the beginnings, but this was really the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. Yeah. So there was a lot of, like, working towards, okay, this is what this is actually going to be about, and I don't think we got that. The yeah. first episode mm -hmm. yeah. so you know it's it it so watching it and then knowing that going into it knowing it's in this guy and then watching like the city starting to black out you're like oh this is tense <laughs> and you know yeah and you know of course she's in the hospital bed and she's all geared up whatever and it, you know she presumably passes away as, yeah. as the power goes out and as she's coming to and she's realizing that she has mobility and, and mm. starting to realize she's inside the game and stuff like that, it really is just about her just going, oh, I'm in the game. Mm -hmm. I'm in the game. So I got to, oh, I don't remember, uh, uh, you know, so she pull, mm. pulls up the screen and all that stuff. Yep. And as she's going through it, it there was, I got like a very Tron feel <laughs> at one point because yeah. she's looking for the place where she can go communicate the tower to communicate mm -hmm. ah. you know in tron you know yeah, they're looking I for the, the the yeah yeah, yeah totally. um so you know but again i like you there, there wasn't there's no villain there's no yeah no conflict there's no there, no there's no real conflict the only conflict is her figuring this stuff out yeah yeah um and just moving through the and, and at this point establishing how she's going to move through the world I, like you said, the animation was fine. Mm -hmm. Nothing spectacular, certainly not bad at all. No. Um, but I got bored with it um, oh, really? by the end of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, by the end of it, I, I, I think, I, yeah, one of you two just said it just a few minutes ago, it wasn't an isekai that took three episodes to, or it is an episode, mm -hmm. uh, an isekai that appears to take three episodes to establish what's going on yeah what's, what's so you know yeah what was it where, where it's gonna go so um unless the second episode like really picks that up i'm like yeah mm, okay mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah. i'll say it it uh it almost gave me a sense for like kuma 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 bear mm -hmm. where it's like yeah. someone's isekai and you know kuma 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 bear she didn't care yeah she gets isekai mm -hmm. and she's like oh this is something different okay and it's, a, it's kind of the same sort of thing. Her yeah. reaction to this is like, the, I can move. Um, huh, what happened? Mm -hmm. I, you know, watching it, it's like, okay, so you're sort of telegraphing in this journey that she's going to take. Mm -hmm. She's going to learn what happened. Mm -hmm. um, either, you know, she comes back to life at the end of the show mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, I was, in a, I was in a deep coma for like such and such. Yeah. And now I'm back alive. Wow, what an amazing adventure. Yeah. Or she finds out that, yes, the power outage and that was mm -hmm. done. Yeah. And that now this is her new life. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, she's, yeah. she's come back to Liddale and that's now she's going to be this, this wonderful high elf. Yeah. Um, it's not uh, gripping drama. Mm -hmm. The, you know what I mean? The, the premise is not any new ground. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, it's not, the dialogue is not terrible. I mean, it's cute stuff going on, yeah. you know, some, some amusing moments. Um, it's certainly well worth the lunchtime watch. You know, <laughs> and, yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it's something where I'm not going to I'm not going to tell somebody you will be riveted every mm-hmm. minute, just thirsting to know what's the next. Mm-hmm. No, it it's definitely in that category of like you'll just enjoy the time that you spend twenty minutes or so, mm-hmm. and then. You can just go about your day and be all right with it. You catch up with it a day later, catch up with it a week later, two months later. It's a nice show. It's It's got good things going on. You'll find some joy out of it. I am curious because, not to get too dark, but the idea that if she was finding solace in Lido, um, if she is indeed having her death dream... This would mm. kind of fit that of, okay, I'm back in this world, but it's like 200 years later, so it's not exactly the same, so I can kind of imagine the things yeah, that would happen be. to me. Right, like, it, it could, that could kind of be the the drama of it, that she's kind of, you know, she's in that, that moment where, where all of the, the power is failing. Who knows? Yeah. So there's, there's potential for drama there, I think. Um, but yeah, um, uh, I enjoyed that it. That would I, be a know. really interesting dark ending. Part, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't end with acceptance. It doesn't end with, like, I'm back alive. No. You're, this is your death yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you're dying. It's a little heavy. Thank Fade you. the blackness. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the void. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, I mean, that's um, Hard Will Wonderland Land at the End of the World, right? That's, that's the whole premise of that book. <laughs> um, oh, but anyway. Um, mm. So uh, move on to something definitely um, much lighter in tone. Uh, life with an ordinary guy who reincarnated into a total <laughs> fantasy knockout. <laughs> I laughed out loud at this. Oh, I enjoyed okay. it. I enjoyed it so much. Um, but I will tell you that it's one of those wonderful, wonderful animes where you can watch one or two episodes, walk away from it two months, two years, 20 years later, you'll go back to it and go, oh, okay, okay it's fine. You, it's one that you can put down and walk away mm. and go back to it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I just laughed at the premise of these two guys. Oh, and by the way, I felt really old because they're calling them 32 years old as old. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Oh, okay, yeah. fine. You know, mm-hmm. so you get reincarnated, and you know, they this LED goddess is trying to do a good, this one particular one of them a good turn by turning him into a beautiful young woman, blonde haired woman, blue eyed woman, yeah. after he had gotten drunk and, and was spouting out his, his, his misery, <laughs> and then having to deal with the curse of the two of them, knowing that they're both men, mm-hmm. and then being attracted to each other. Yep. And all the circumstances. I don't kind of want to, it'll take too long to, to explain the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. But it, you know, it's just, it's funny. It's a spoof on this guy. I think that's what it is yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. I enjoyed yeah. about it. About it. It's, it's a spoof. Yeah. Um, I would caution folks not to take the sexual politics too, too seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the whole gender yeah. thing back and forth. The, the show is clearly not trying to deal with, you know, gender politics and all that kind of stuff. It is just a, Goofy there's, hairless, yeah. There's nothing deep about this. No, <laughs> yeah. no not at all. Um, Don't try diving into the kiddie pool. In a <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, um, it, they've got some lovely cameo spots in it, too. Yeah, sure. Just, yeah. 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 Really funny. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, that's, um, oh, they're, okay. They're, it's quite a, a, a treat. I, I, I'm not going to say anything about it because it, mm-hmm. it's worth at least the one episode to, to watch for mm-hmm. the animation's good. The, the premise is goofy. The cameos are really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will touch on is that there is a background symbol thing stuck in the ground and like yeah. you can see in the far distance. Mm-hmm. It's like I had said to Brent that reminded me of, first of all, Nia under seven. Yeah. Where in the background you see always like the spaceship UFO, yeah. like form in the background, mm-hmm. but it's the same kind of way where it's almost yeah. looks translucent, like mm-hmm. it's not right. actually there, but it is like a painting on a backdrop that's far away. And then also, Eva, you know, right? A giant, giant cross <laughs> well, yeah, like shoved into the ground. I'm like, okay, I'm um, a shot of that. It's just like then, one guy's just like, there's something about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the, yeah. The, the one cameo, I, I think that's not ruining people's, people's mm-hmm. um, look for cameo spots mm-hmm. is 
I really think the LED bunny lady mm. is uh, Kuro Asagi I from oh. Problem Children or coming from another oh, universe. Okay. Cool. I really think that's her mm. character model came from there. Mm -hmm. gotcha. But, you know, again, yeah. who knows? There's, there's, this is one episode I'm, I'm going to keep watching because I really want to see what other cameos they throw mm -hmm. into it because it's like it's – it's an interesting enough premise that you know, yeah. like all of it is, is animated well enough that I, yeah. I think it warrants at least for me to go for a second episode to see what else are gonna, little little eggs Easter eggs are going to throw yeah. in there. And we talked about how the the the, the man uh, definitely has a Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Yes. Know, yes. Of, uh, he even does the point at one point. Yeah. 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 I, I kept having I kept ex expecting to hear I object. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean. Um, if I, uh, for me, the one downside was it is the entire episode of the characters telling you what they feel and think. Um, there's a lot of talking. There's a lot of talking, <laughs> a lot of like inner monologue of what is he thinking? Why is he thinking that? Do, should should I respond to that? I don't know if I should respond to that. And the other character then saying, why are they thinking that? Why are they? And there's just it's very, very, very talky. Um, so for me, I, I could have used a little less of that. It, it felt. Little talking down to me at, at, at times. Um, Maybe they're just getting it out of the way so oh, well, that episode two will be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so just be aware it is a very talky first episode, uh, yeah. wherever that goes. Um, a not very talky first episode uh, was Love of Kill. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is. Boy, I have mixed feelings about this. Not in a bad way. But um, a lot of just kind of, of weird emotions out of this one. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, uh, two assassins um, who meet each other, uh, male and female, um, and then the, um, the male assassin basically asks the female out on a date, um, and this is all premise stuff, and then very much like starts trying to, to date her. Like just woo her. Woo her. Yes, woo her is a much better uh, term for it. Um, and so, but like the tone is very serious. Um, it's not a rom com. Um, yeah. And both of the characters are kind of mental. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're damaged in special damaged, ways. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they're. I mean, they're both assassins. So, that, yeah. I mean, to be that fair, right she's, there. she's a bounty hunter. But, mm -hmm. Okay, she's a bounty be fair. hunter be fair. To, to capture the people so that they'll be killed later. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but they're, so this is, not, but I don't, I want to stress that this is not one of those things where, oh, I don't like anybody, but there's nobody likable. No, they're, they're likable, but yeah. they're just, you have to take them for what they are, which are violent human beings that are, that are psychologically damaged. Mm -hmm. And one of them you don't realize is that damaged until the very end of the episode. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is just clearly unhinged. Yeah. Um, the, the, um, you know, the, you know, Brent gave me a little tidbit of information about it. But I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. But uh, I was just like, oh, well, it, it does explain things. Yeah. <laughs> it makes some sense now. Yeah. 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 It does explain things. Um, but the animation reminded me a lot for some reason of Death Note. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Um, mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of that, uh, the kind of character styles and things like that. Um, it is, I like odd things, you guys, uh, mm -hmm. like in terms of anime, <laughs> you know, certain, certain things I enjoy just because of their oddity. Mm -hmm. And this falls definitely falls under this yeah. <laughs> messed up, enjoyable, enjoyably messed up uh, anime. Um, but it is, if you like shows like Dexter or Death Note mm. or things of that nature that are kind of darker on, uh, they're on the dark side, yep. uh, that has a, that has a little spice of comedy in it, uh, mm. especially the, the, um, the office that, that runs, yeah. uh, the bounty hunters, um, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. contracts, um, is if you like that you're definitely gonna like this episode and but one of the great selling points for me just because it's just such great timing for this is that it's around christmas like mm. literally yeah like yeah like they literally play the japanese 
and I don't think I've seen this before in an anime. Mm. I'm sure it has happened, but I haven't seen it myself. Where they actually play the Japanese version of Christmas. What do you do on Christmas mm. when you're in Japan? Mm-hmm. You know, what yeah. what are the things that you do? Because it's not tradition. Because it's not like it is here in the United States. It's a lot different. Yeah. They didn't do the KFC, by the way. In case That's true. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the other kind of you know cultural things that that happen happens in this video. Um, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I I, I can't wait to watch more. I say I'd certainly pointed out uh, to Brent like there are some moments where they're animation quality on like some shots yeah. is a little dodgy mm-hmm. um like, it's not <laughs> like definitely mm-hmm. um it's not yeah. so jarring as to be like wow i just visually i you know this is I'm annoying as hell. Yeah. i can't do it um she struck me as like a violet evergarden model where it's like i just mm-hmm. got that kind of like yeah. vibe on yeah. like how yeah. she looked it's mm-hmm. like she had that you know Vaguely, kind of thousand yard stare at some moments there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like Fair I've seen down. some things. Kind of, mm-hmm. um, I I would say that I I thought it was very competently animated. Um, mm-hmm. I the the hitman aspect of it was interesting. I think we had uh, assessed Brent, you and I, that mm-hmm. that it was in New York. Or at least yeah. somewhere that was a, a yeah, Western yeah. amalgam. Yeah, yeah. That certainly is, not yeah. Asia. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, uh, just that I think there were some uh, people in cars that were left-hand yeah. mm-hmm. drive. They were not mm-hmm. right-hand mm-hmm. drive yep. cars. Yep. So that it, it establishes yeah. newspapers for better or for, yeah. Right, it, and texting. Yeah. All of mm-hmm. the yeah. male protagonist texts are all in English mm-hmm. with Japanese subtitles for the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's interesting that as much gunplay as occurs, it's mm-hmm. it, I don't – it's a it's kind of a known it's like a, oh you're not going to have a lot of gunplay in a japanese right city, yeah right? yeah right you're going to yeah, have yeah. in america it's like the wild west so you're going to have a lot of gunplay <laughs> everybody's got a gun yeah right? exactly people yeah got guns, old people got guns so i kind of got a little sense out of that where it's like okay you're not saying anything but it's just kind of like oh we know america's got lots of guns so we're just going to do this story here like, yeah that, yeah thanks i got you um um okay. No, I mean, but I mean, that's, so that's it. It's just yeah. I, I could see where it could develop more. I, I would yeah. like to know more of the background of these characters. Uh, the what little bit that uh, mm. you've shared with us, Brent, is like that's Ooh. interesting for the character background development. Mm-hmm. So I, how that's going to play out in the next several episodes. But yeah. at right now, I could walk away from this because mm. mm-hmm. there's not so much of of, of detail and, yeah. and technical writing to it that I would really grab. Yeah, and and I wanted to follow up on the animation. The animation in this, is like as well as the character designs, is quite stylized. It doesn't have that like three dimensional movement to yeah. uh, fight scenes that you might see, like in Ghost in the Shell or whatever. Um, when you do see fight scenes, they are very much you know posed and set up from a certain something, angle to yeah. show something. Um, but right. you don't feel like this is a um, like a live action movie that it's having to be animated. Um, and it's not a complaint. It's just a, a very specific sort of stylistic sure, choice yeah. for how all that right. moves. So just be aware of that coming in. Um, <laughs> um, an anime that is neither of those things. Um, <laughs> uh, but still definitely has a uh, very specific uh, style and approach. Is Miss Kuroitsu from the Monster Development Department. <laughs> um, which is... <laughs> oh, this was a delight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, just really enjoy this. So basically, um, you know, oh. all of these Power Rangers shows, the where you have the good guys fighting the bad guys, and the bad guys have a monster of the week. Well, where does that monster come from? Exactly. Right? How do they what? get that monster? There must be some lab somewhere where a bunch of people are in a lab. Oops, uh, people are in a lab, you know, building monsters the monster of the week the monster of the week uh what's the story of the people living in and working in that lab that's the basic idea um it's very much a comedy yes all it is it is just a comedy about folks working for the evil overlord to make the monster of the week um over the top ridiculous but the production quality in certain aspects of this are really impressive Early yeah. on in the show, 
um, they're, they're they're doing a a um, sort of a summary of what's happened to various other evil organizations, and so they basically cut to sequences from other Super Sentai series, <laughs> and every time they do, and they introduce, you know, well, the uh, Space Time Warrior Ibalagar R defeated this person. They play the theme song the new, new, to Space Time Warrior <laughs> in the background, and then there's a new, it's a completely new theme song. I'm like, dang, somebody actually paid attention to this. <laughs> yeah, imagine being that guy who has to do that and that footwork. Like, okay, we got like these six things we need theme songs for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really um, exactly. It's a spoof of Power Rangers from the villain side. It's it's great fun, very ridiculous. Um, uh, Crossed with like office politics, um, yeah. So I'll yes. be, you know, oh, we gotta, we gotta you know, do this in no time, and we gotta do this under budget, and all that crazy stuff. And, and it's all important that. that you eat well and that you can't do, do, right. because you can't do the best work if you don't have so, to take care of yourself. Like, so, so, and that's the big villain telling you, the, the, the monster <laughs> yeah. crew going, and they're like, oh, we're gonna get killed, we're gonna get killed, and he comes in all menacing, like, you have to eat right, you have to rest. <laughs> And in order to do the job properly, I want to make sure that you're taking your proper rest. Because <laughs> if you don't, you know. Yeah. And you're just like, oh my God. So this guy is like, you know, the evil villain who wants to take over the world is like an HR expert. You know? yeah. <laughs> exactly. Even <laughs> evil corporations can do that. <laughs> right. Exactly, right. <laughs> it felt a lot like Zaveda plot. I mean, it's yeah, just that kind yeah, of like yeah, yeah. goofy villain groups, and they're just trying to figure their way around, and the, yep. the heroes are like, "What is happening?" And mm. they're like, "Oh, you showed yep. the you showed the monster." Oh, yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> and not to spoil anything, but there is a twist at the end of the episode, which I really appreciated. Which is, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Nicely yeah. done. <clears throat> I don't know where all that is going. So yeah, it was it was a good laugh. I mean. Yeah. The, there isn't anything that again that you're gonna write home to to, to <laughs> people and say this is the best in the universe. But man, you will get a chuckle out of it. Yep. It's a nice light ride, and mm -hmm. it's 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 decent. I, I, I have yeah. fun watching. Yeah. It. And I'll also say, even if you're not familiar with um, Tokusatsu shows and like Power Rangers yeah. shows, you'll still get a lot of the comedy. Oh yeah, it's, you'll not, get it's it. not very dependent it. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, yeah. it'll still come, still come through. Um. Now, if you don't know Power Ranger shows, because you've been living on Mars for the last <laughs> 50 years, right? I'm like, how's that possible? Everybody exactly. Power Rangers. Um, now, um, we say that. Um, now we get to talk about my dress up darling. Oh boy. The, the, I'm sorry. Which one again? Uh, my, my dress, dress up, up darling. darling. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Um. um talk about my totally misreading what that yeah, was about same here <laughs> absolutely 100 percent. talk about i mean i think when we were going over the lineup and we were choosing the shows um i was just like oh this one's gonna yeah. be creepy and all that, and all that. Mm -hmm. it's story is great yeah it is good mm -hmm. um you know, it's it's not an action adventure or anything like that. There's nothing creepy about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's and it's literally just to, to you know drop it down to its essence is basically, dude's got a thing in his life that he's very interested in, but not a lot of people will understand it, and he beats himself down for it yeah. until he finds that one other person that goes, oh, you do that? Oh, cool. Well, I kind of do this, and it kind of lines with up with that. Mm -hmm. So let's be friends let's let's do yeah. the thing let's be friends and it's just like just like oh oh okay we're that's nice i like that it's a show about you know? respecting other people's passions it was, yeah. right even if you and don't find, share that passion it's hard, that's that's awesome. right and, yeah and finding that connectivity yeah. and that's why we have anime cons i mean <laughs> yeah. that's right. yeah. uh -huh. exactly. it's like that's the that's the kind of vibe i got out Very of this it's so. like wow this is this is all of us. This is the yeah, thing that right. we have this passion, we have this interest in, and all of us are, are different. We come from different mm -hmm. places in our lives, and this is what they are. These are two different people on yeah. two different tracks, and they're intersecting at that point where their passions touch. And it's just yeah. like, damn cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
there's just tons of heart in this anime. Yeah. Um, uh, just, just, just really, really, really cool. Um, and one thing I really appreciate is that the, you know, the girl, because of course there's, there's a girl. Um, I just love her general, uh, her attitude, just her personality. Um, yes. Because yeah. she is just very self-confident. She is comfortable in her skin. She knows what she likes. She knows what she doesn't like. And she is just totally fine with that. Um, and having a character who is that relaxed and that poised is just really, really nice in anime. We, we don't get a lot yeah. of that in high school characters. Well, and it's done in, in a... In a in a in a thoughtful manner, because yeah. you flash by a scene where someone makes a comment, mm-hmm. and she is fully self possessed to confront, yeah, and be like, you know, nuts to you, yeah, and yeah. yet she encounters protagonist gun, and she's like, I don't, I, you know, here's a moment where she's like, this is the thing I'm passionate about, but I'm not really, I need improvement on the thing that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm not really confident. It's like, yeah. wow, you can confront fully and completely this circumstance. Mm-hmm. And yet when it comes to something, this other yeah. part, you're yeah. like, I can admit I'm not, I'm not confident in this thing. Yeah. I'm yeah. confident here, but not there. It's like, mm-hmm. wow. Like yeah. so many you know, humans in the universe <laughs> were like, I'm really, really good at that, but I'm, I'm weak on this other spot. And you're able to admit it and yeah. confront it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. come on. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, and high animation budget. A yeah. lot going on in this. Yeah. Uh, which I was really, really thrilled by. Um, oh, the, the Hina dolls, oh, just the yes. display yeah. that they had, they had done out yeah. when, when he's talking with his grandfather. It's like, wow, who spent the time drawing this? <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I mean, who I, did the research? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who did the research on that? And, and I, 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 I know nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, like the head, the, the doll head he kind of carries around, it's on like, it's either a post or a mounting and it's taped. And it's like, you spent the effort to research how to make a Hina doll head. Mm. And then what are the component parts to it? Not just, it's not just a bisque doll head. It's got right. components to it that's like, I have absolutely no doubt, I trust fully in this, that that is how an artisan has to make that mm. as part of a Hina doll. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, you didn't even need to include that detail. He could have just held the head and been enough. Yeah. But it's like, no, you went that extra mile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, also worth pointing out, there is some edginess in this episode. Um, so there's a little bit of that spread throughout. So just be ready for that. Um, but uh, yeah, this was definitely the dark horse for me. Um, the one that just kind of came out and I fell in love with. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it, it is just, like you said, the attention to detail, the attention to um, the inner lives of the characters really hit home for me. Yeah, um, I, I can't wait to see. She has a collection of friends, and mm-hmm. I cannot yeah. wait to see, because of the character that she is, how they all are, how they all gravitated to her as her personality yeah. type, mm-hmm. and that how then as he's gravitating to her, mm-hmm. how, what their yeah. interactions are going to look like going forward and how his, his getting some connection with people in his class, mm-hmm. how that's going to, I just, I can't wait to see how that's going to go. Yeah. It's going to be such an interesting journey. And the opening credits definitely imply that there's going to be a lot of like him getting exposed to pop culture. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, cause they, they show him like, going into arcades and going into, you know, anime stores and so forth. And so this idea that she's kind of into anime um, to some extent and she's going to kind of pull him into that to some extent, I think, is, is, is a neat idea. Not just from the otaku perspective, but the, the idea of, oh, here's another thing. You know, here's another yeah. passion that I can, I can see and appreciate in its own way, however deep I go into that. Um, really cool. Um, uh, a show that is not that deep. <laughs> um, at all, um, but nevertheless, it is definitely a, a show that I don't. Th- I, I I'll be curious to see if anyone else check out this show because it only aired on YouTube, um, and that is the Ninjala anime. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, 
which is an adaptation. Um, I mean, adaptation. Um, it's an anime series about a uh, Nintendo Switch game, which is a, a team-based, squad-based um, action game uh, around ninja candy, basically, uh, and, and ninjas using gum. So, if you're familiar with Splatoon in, in Nintendo Switch, it's very much that kind of concept, uh, with kind of kid-friendly uh, squad combat. And so it's about these various characters who are trying to invent, well, ninja gum, because they are all descendants of ninja um, in the past. And, uh, yeah. And again, living in like New, in a, in yeah. a stylized like, yeah. New York. Very much New York-esque thing. Um, and Hanzo's great-great-ancestor descended kid here. Here he is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. And, uh, <laughs> it's, there's a, yeah. This is Hattori Hanzo's kid, apparently. Well, yeah, great, 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 great descendant. Um, yeah. Very well, odd. See, here's the thing. Um, this anime is aimed squarely at, like, eight-year-old kids. Not complaining. It is very much, you know, to get those kids, the, the kids who watch Yokai Watch, you know, that, that whole thing. It is very much that, that um, uh, uh, demographic. And as that, it is a colorful, fun cartoony yes. kind of anime series um you know some comedy um a little action here and there ninja stuff um colorful very colorful yeah um, mm -hmm. very very character of, designs of the four minutes that i watched yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so it is very fun in that in, in that side and that's what it is yeah that's yeah that's about right yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I enjoyed the, the, this one episode. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Looking at how they executed this, looking at the sort of ridiculous elements to it, there were good, funny moments to it. So it, mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely got some, some, some worthwhile humor, mm -hmm. at least for a single episode. I'm not entirely sure if you sat me down and said you have to watch 12 or 24 episodes of this today, all yeah. right now, hours and uh, no. I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think I could go that far, um, but I, I think they've they've totally nailed their their kid audience, and I, I yeah. think it will it will help them lock those kids back into playing more of the game. Yeah, and it's like yeah, well, yeah. good of, job <clears throat> of the four minutes that I watched. <laughs> um, what I I'll tell you what what impressed me and mm. made me a little bit sad that I didn't want to watch more. Mm. Um, was when they went through the premise of talking about the story about the descendants of the ninjas, you know, mm -hmm. going through time. That sequence was fun. I, I, yeah. I enjoyed it. I, 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 I thought it was fun, and I thought it was, you know, you know, accessible, that kind of a thing, because mm -hmm. yeah. then I realized, of course, you know, who this is aimed at. So, of course, it's going to be accessible. But it just seemed more so. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. But it was, it was enjoyable. Yeah. And then, you know, you talk about the colors. That is definitely what grabbed me. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the colors of the animation. And it seemed like there was some thought and care into the animation. I, I could be yeah. wrong, because like I said, I only saw for like four or five minutes. But it seemed to me like if I was 10 years old, this would probably be something definitely I would watch. You know, it would grab me. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, very much for kids. Um, that's fine, there's plenty of anime for kids. I, I mean, if it's if it stayed in that same kind of vein, and you have kids who who play this, yeah, I could. Yeah. It would not like cause you to go insane as a parent. No, it's right. not Paw yeah, Patrol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not Paw Patrol. Yeah, I mean, I mean so yeah, exactly. I, good point. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't yep. sit and watch it, but mm -hmm. if I had a small child who was like, mm -hmm. "Oh my gosh, this is the thing," mm -hmm. and it had this much kind of humor and much you know as yeah. much cartoony element to it. I could easily sit there and, you know, watch with and be like, you know, so how do you like it? Is it good? Is it just look at you like your show? It's good. You have a game. You know, mm -hmm. I can see that as a parent. As yeah. a parent, this yeah. is a, a perfectly fine enough to watch with your child. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and an anime aimed at a uh, somewhat older audience, um, but not that much, I don't think, uh, is Orient. Um, mm -hmm. So Orient is a, is definitely one of the shonen -y shonen anime of the season just shonen. a little <laughs> <laughs> shonen 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 yeah this is the all the shonen you should watch it shonen yeah um 
And uh, I think these screen grabs will tell you kind of everything you need to know, you know visually and storytelling wise. Um, but it does have kind of an interesting premise. Uh, basically, um, sometime, you know, and it, it is set in the past, um, but many, many years ago, Oni showed up in Japan, kind of attacked and took over uh, Japan. Uh, and they have uh, turned society um, into a. Um, it's Battlefield Earth. Wow, I just realized it's Battlefield yeah. Earth. Um, Earth means soil and oh, green, but okay. Wow. <laughs> so if you've seen that movie, and it's, if you have, I am so sorry. Um, yeah, I read the, I read the I've book. I've not gone or, or read the book. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Um, Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> oh, Come on. Gosh. Um, uh, okay. But, uh, but yeah, so these, these Oni have taken over, and so humanity is all subjugated to the Oni race, um, and they're all going to go mine for these Oni. Um, and the the true history of kind of what happened in the past has been suppressed and the main character is trying to fight back against all that. Um, and the main character is very much, again, kind of the, the, the uh, shonen -y, most shonen -y shonen character. Um, <laughs> the most animated of his school class. Yes, very much <laughs> so. <laughs> Everybody else is slightly not as animated. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, it's like the, it's point like, to the main character. character. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like uh, classmate, classmate, classmate. Ah, protagonist. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Very, very much who, so. who could it be? It's the yeah. most decent animation. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, uh, that said, um, of the shonen premises out there, you know, I'm, I'm not a big shonen guy, but I was actually fairly sucked into this because of the idea of having this sort of oppressed um, uh, minority of humans who are living in this sort of oppressed society. The main character trying to fight back against that um, and being the sort of rebel against what's going on there. Uh, and the fact that you you see from the main, uh, uh, the opening credit sequence that it's a group of, I think, four characters who are all traveling together. Um, I kind of like that dynamic. So I think this has enough variations where they're not all like living in modern Tokyo, but they're actually spirits that they all communicate with or whatever, <laughs> right? Yeah. We're um, not in a sort of vaguely fantasy world, but they're also like hovercraft um and um and it's kind of you know mishmash <laughs> stuff and it's kind of just kind of there enough to have reasons for them to fight with stuff um this felt a little bit more um of a an interesting premise for me um high budget animation too um definitely mm -hmm. a, a nice budget here um yeah uh, well this is what the one that i pointed out where they went from what looked like more regular animation yep. regular mm -hmm. one of them yeah. to like moments where you had a, 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 a zoom in on like someone's face mm -hmm. and you could see where it was a much higher mm -hmm. res mm -hmm. on that face and the style was like purposely different mm -hmm. than the rest of the animation yeah and it's like okay that's not an accident i mean this mm -hmm. is we're making stylistic choices here and it's like mm -hmm. i appreciate right. that yeah that's an interesting you're, it's not jarring it's mm -hmm. not terrible but it's like it lets you know that they're aware this is this is a shift. We're mm -hmm. shifting now. Yep. We've got we've drawn your attention to this specific thing to get you dialed, mm -hmm. and then we're going to move back to the regular animation. It's like okay, good. I can see the technical skills going on here, mm -hmm. yeah. even though I also am not a shonen 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 <laughs> fan. <laughs> so when I watched this, and I agree totally one thousand percent on the animation. This mm -hmm. this is worth watching for the animation. It's true. Uh, no matter what I say next, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and I, I, in all seriousness, no matter what I say next, go ahead and at least watch this first episode, make your decision and, and if you want to keep watching it or not. But in terms of the animation, you will not be disappointed with yeah. this at all, mm -hmm. period, end of story. The story that sucked me into it, that, that got me going and going, oh, hey, I might, because like the rest, I'm not a shiny, shonen, 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 shonen kind of guy. <laughs> um, but it's, it, it, what it is, is that they said it deliberately in the Warring States period, mm. where they only attacked Japan when it was disunited. And too late, the, the feudal lords got together and banded together and tried to fight the Oni. So they created the group called the Bushi. Well, actually, that is the actual name. One of the many names mm. that the samurai had in Japan historically yeah. is Bushi. And, um, the Bushido it, Code? Yes, actually. Bushido, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so 
they, you know, said, I thought that was a very interesting historical element to it that they brought in. And then, you know, the idea of the Oni, and then, you know, like what Brent's talking about, you know, the subjugation of humanity, and that humanity is buying into it. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, and they, and it's like, don't look behind the curtain because we need you look behind the curtain and they do because when the miners are finally taking mm -hmm. to the mines they're just like oh this is not the paradise we thought it was <laughs> yeah, right. and you know i mean literally this the first character you see it gets gummed by one of the Oni. <laughs> anyway yeah um so in, a lifetime and, of hard labor is not the paradise i dreamed of well that's an yes. interesting statement steve <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of living it mm. yeah. no, yeah. um, so anyway um but what what made me go nope mm. was um fight sequence is good yeah. dude with the pickaxe mm -hmm. who developed his own sword system with the pickaxe yeah. which was i thought was an interesting really nice little touch mm -hmm. by the way yeah when his friend picks it up and goes oh, he doesn't even know how to katana he goes oh he created an entire manual on how to do this mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so that was a really nice touch i really enjoyed that and so his friend is just like, I gotta go save him. Shows up on a crystal fuel, like I almost want to say crystal meth fuel <laughs> bike, you might motorcycle, right. and hops in over the the guard, whatever. And I'm just like, <sighs> there we go. See ya. <laughs> nope. <laughs> See, Which, I, I mean, they've given no indication whatsoever of any none. technology no, at no, all. None. Mm -hmm. Like, you get yeah. no hint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, also weird because it's, it's clearly a CG bike. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's a little out of place. Um, uh, yeah. I love that because it was so absurdly over the top. I was just like, okay, sure, why not? Like, it's the toy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right. There, there's yeah. there's the toy yeah. for the for the, the, the folks to buy. The um, action figure that doesn't. It, it's like the evil can evil uh, evil yeah. 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 motorcycle. That's, yeah. <laughs> but evil can evil came with the bike. It's like, true. That's yeah. true. This yeah. one I could just about guarantee that the the figures <laughs> would be like bike sold separately. I'd be like oh, of course it is. Seventy five dollars worth of sold separately. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So kind of a mixed bag on this one. Um, very much kind of up to your interpretation of it. Um, and, and what we can tolerate, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm. If anything, I'm slightly curious now that we've got the bike introduced. <laughs> are they gonna have like? Are they, you know, the next scene they're gonna drive off somewhere and there's like teleporters and, <laughs> and stuff? Be like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's 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 very odd. Um, um, and so let's move on from very odd to. Police in a pod. Ooh, yay. Exactly. Um, so this is a show about two police women. Um, it's not Cagney and Lacey, but you know. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the twist being that uh, neither of them are particularly thrilled with their pl place in life and yeah. the difficulty of being a police person in Japan, um, apparently, and how hard of a job that is. Uh, and so one of them is, is, let's just say, a little bitter. Um, <laughs> Slightly. Um, while the other is just kind of Me having a crisis. at work. Yeah. <laughs> Fuchi bucho. Um, uh, yeah, and, and the other is just kind of like, you know, uncertain about her future, what she wants to do. Um, so it's very much that idea. Um, where it's just much more kind of, in, in a way, it's kind of almost a workplace comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, he, here's the, the schedules and the situations. They have these frustrations. How do they deal with that? Um, but it's definitely not. Um, the comedy is more uh, like The Office style, where it's not like laugh track comedy. It's not joke comedy. It's just yeah. here are these situations, and oh my gosh, and then they, they're like, Ugh, you know, and move on to something else, right? Classic yeah. sitcom situation mm -hmm. comedy. Right. There's, there's nothing. The comedy is not over the, over the top weirdness or yeah. anything yeah. like that. It's, and one of the, I think the reasons why we, we enjoy it is because we have had those jobs where it's just kind of, or at least for me, where it's, you know, you're just like, 
you do the job, you actually do it well, but there's elements of the job where you find yourself muttering and cursing under your breath. And someone's going, Steve, you can't say that. Steve, stop, stop. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, the customer is like right in front of you. You can't say that. So it's, I'll there's all the back, that. big guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, so there's that, but it's also, you know, it's, it's grounded. The comedy is grounded. Everything yeah, about it yeah. is grounded and it's fun. When we were watching it, we were just kind of talking about absurd moments of the situation of like when they actually catch a guy, mm -hmm. a burglar, and they put him in an interrogation room and the door is just wide open. And one of them is interrogating the, the prisoner and the other two are debating who's going to go to the kid's school and do the lecture for the kid. <laughs> and like everyone's trying to pass off the buck. And, you know, it's just like, we're all just like, going, but the door is open. <laughs> Like the guy, guy could just guy get up and just kind of shuffle right there. Off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's tough because on the one hand, I'm not sure how much like the absurdity of a kind of the office life is intentional. Because um, there's a lot of just like, that's not really police procedure. Or is it, are, they, are they just lazy? Like, is that kind of the right, joke? Yeah. Is that they're just not caring about police procedure and whatever? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, so that, that's kind of an odd thing, but... Uh, yeah, definitely. If you like, if if you like your comedy on the black side, uh, th this is this is one of those. Um, and I, I I certainly get the feeling that there are, even though there's some really odd moments. I remember when I was twelve, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of kind of moments. Yeah. Um, that wistful looking off into the distance <laughs> kind of thing. Um, there, it, I get the real sense from this that the humor we're getting here mm. is kind of a hook because mm. I don't know why, but somewhere in there, I think there's some serious things that are going to happen in oh, this okay. show. Mm. Yeah. And I don't know why I feel that. It's like, you know, it seems like it could just brush off, just be yeah. like very surface funny sit sitcom. And mm -hmm. it's like, that's going to be it. But I just kind of get the sense you've, you've set the tone that these are not criminal division. These are beat cops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And you've had them take in a very amenable, bumbling burglar, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of fun. And they're like, they're doing some training, and it just all seems kind of light. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's this kind of sense. It's like Fuji Bucho, the Fuji sergeant there, used to be a criminal division detective person. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of get the sense that somewhere in there, they're going to run into something, mm -hmm. and her detective work is going to really snap in. It's not going to be pulling people over in a police car or walking the beat. It's going to be right. a serious moment that's going to happen, and that's going to play a key factor in her kohai, mm -hmm. why her kohai really should want this job, mm -hmm. why this is, a, yeah. this is a thing that matters, why this is important right. to society, why this is important to everyone. And I think it's going to have some of that growth to it. And I, yeah. again, I have no reason why. I've seen one episode. Well, that's it. You know? Yeah. And I, I think one of, the, one of the, the hints about that is the general visual style of the show. You know, characters are not yeah. going super deformed. They're not doing right. the, the, the white eye thing, you know, when, when reacting right. to things. Um, it, it, it does have a more grounded, serious approach. Characters do occasionally have, like, you know, um, uh, um, some silly expressions and so forth, but it's right. definitely not comedic in that way. And so it, it does feel like they're staying reserved for that reason because there is drama coming down the line. Yeah, and that's what I, I can't wait to find how they're going to do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just like, come on. It's just, yeah. I like a, a police procedural mm -hmm. that's done from the, the women cop side. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like I can't think of any of the ones that I've, <clears throat> I've seen. Female investigators and you know, supernatural, future right. world. But I, you know, what I mean, I, I can't think of any time that I've seen like a lot of police women um, stories that I've like dialed in on. I'm sure there. Are, yeah. I swear, Brent, you've mentioned one before, or, or well, the one we thought it was going to be like was uh, what was it called, Brent? Uh, you're under arrest. You're under arrest. Brent. You're under arrest. Yeah. And it's and that's like the big one. Yeah, that I have not yeah. gotten a chance to see that. So I'm, I'm, you know, now I'm like, okay, you know, yeah. what am I going to work with here? The, yeah. the the interesting thing, the the hook for me, and I think what mm. it is is good for for non Japanese or Asian mm. audiences. The hook is going to be how they actually do things. Like, yeah, when they pull somebody over, 
they're standing on the sidewalk and they just walk out the street and go, um, yeah, pull over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that doesn't happen here. <laughs> we run people over when they do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you're not being yeah, chased you know? by the cop car, you're not going to stop. <laughs> stop. Yeah. That's not a thing. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I noticed that I thought was, was really interesting was the concept of a work dormitory. Yeah. yeah. Meaning a, yeah. a place that you have that the business offers you so that you're accessible and, and that you have, you know, there's one less thing you have to worry about. Yeah. So you can focus yeah. on the job, mm -hmm. I guess. But I was just like, well, like, really? I mean, it reminds me a little bit about, you know, state police barracks, but you don't see that on right. for B cops or, you know, city cops or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's certain things, elements yeah. of that you're going to be like, going, oh, wait, that's how they do that that's, there? That's a great point. Yeah, this, this is going to be a, a really yeah. fun show to watch just to see what, what it's like for Japanese police. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this I think it's got a lot to offer mm, yeah, like from from yeah, many yeah, different yeah. angles that will be really engaging and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Totally with you on that. Um speaking of a lot to offer. Um boy, um Requiem for the Rose King. Um or of the Rose Hi. King. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Um yeah. again, one of those anime where you you look at the 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 poster and you're like, "Okay. I I I think I know what this is going to be." Um it's uh, dramatic boys doing dramatic boy <laughs> things. Like, oh. Nope. Nope. Wow. Um, I For don't you, Shakespeare. Start with this. Uh, um, I, all I'll say is that uh, well, not all I'll say because I talk a lot, <laughs> but um, one of the few, one of the many one, one of the many things I'll say. One of the many things I'll say is uh, the if you know your Shakespeare, mm. just count, just tick off the plays. Yep. Yep. Just yeah, you might want to dust off. off the old shades here. Yeah, yeah just, just start taking them off. Like... Uh, so this is very, so the show is very, it actually, at the very beginning, it gives an homage to William Shakespeare. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. basically yeah. Just, just tells you, look, we're basing this off his stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you're familiar stuff. with Shakespeare and you're, third, familiar yeah. With, yeah, and you're familiar with the histories, it's basically that. Mm -hmm. And with a smattering, a smattering of the Scottish play of Macbeth, and there's going to be my uh, what I see is also uh, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, and, yeah, 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 mm, yeah. With um, a twist. <clears throat> so we did. Oh yeah, with the big twist. Um, <laughs> no king. So man. if you if you know your if you know your Shakespeare, then Richard III has a deformity or many deformities, mm -hmm. as in real life and also in Shakespeare's plays. Mm -hmm. You will come to see what the deformity actually is. Yeah. In this, I, I, I don't want to yeah. spoil it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But. But one of the one of the most disconcerting things that that happened during this um, was the appearance of Joan of Arc. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I'm just I'm, there's no other explanation. Yeah. Just throw it out there. You uh -huh. guys just just roll with it. Yeah. Um, well, Shakespeare visually, came up with the whole idea, so you know. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> it's, it's totally legit, right? And there's and there's uh, and but going back to more technical things visually this is very nice yeah, um, uh, yeah. It, it is it is dark it is foreboding uh great use of grays and light oh. and yeah. you know just just wonderful and knowing when to animate and when to not animate mm -hmm. yep and it's just very very pleasing to the eye this is not a action anime per se there's mm -hmm. some action in it but it's not, you know, there's no mecha <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. or anything yeah. going on. You know, no, no crystal meth bikes jumping in out of nowhere. Um, At least not yet. <laughs> True, not yeah. Yet. Uh -huh. like, but <clears throat> it is a solid story. And in the, in the an like I said, the animation is is very solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. Um, somebody in the chat actually mentioned, uh, uh, LKD, uh, uh, yeah, uh, LKD in the, in the chat mentioned Technolize. Um, Ooh. Very <laughs> visually, very you know, artistically stylized show. Very much like that. Right. Lane, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, Blue Rock Phantom shows like that. Very heavily visually stylized. That is very much what this is. Uh, John, what were your thoughts? My thoughts were just holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I you know just watching this, the War of the Roses, and thinking you know, wow, this is a 
uh, the liberties taken with with certain historical aspects don't oh, yeah, take yeah. away from right. the impact of the story as, as as they're telling it. And I I would honestly love to sit down with kids who are currently reading Shakespeare mm. and reading history and sit them down and see, watch their reaction to this because yeah. it's really an interesting tale of the characters mm -hmm. that you read about historically. And yeah. it's like, it's a very interesting way that they've interpreted them. Uh, the deformity is a, is a really interesting way yeah. that they've taken that. Mm -hmm. Joan of Arc, I have no idea. I <laughs> no, no idea. <laughs> that was a moment of like, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's that again? Yep. Um, I, I don't know that I can, I don't know that I could sit down and, and watch a lot of this at a given time. This is mm -hmm. kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of yeah, got a heavy yeah. vibe going on for it where it's like uh, another one of those. I have to be in a mood and a mindset mm -hmm. to sit down and tackle this. This mm -hmm. one episode, I'm like, wow, okay. Except for the, the Joan of Arc thing. I just, wow, okay. Yeah. Huh. That's, mm -hmm. I got to So pick, did I, I freeze for you do. guys? Did uh, I freeze for you guys? Uh, yes, your video is frozen, but we can hear you fine. Okay, cool. Yep. It's a great picture of you frozen, Steve. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like, going, yeah, great. <laughs> You're just not Too liking much. what I'm saying, so you have this look on your face like, uh, <laughs> he should just shut up. Uh, he's... So, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think – Certainly, this is one of those. If you're like, "Wow, this will be a fun, funny romp," nope, no, no, <laughs> no, it will not. Um, really, be in a in a in a very thoughtful mindset when you're when you're watching this because it's going to give you a lot to work with. Yeah. It's very experimental. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very out there, very fringe. Um, so, if you're into that, as I am, um, uh, this will definitely give you a lot to kind of. Uh, dive into and uh, and and consider. Um, also, just a lot of variety, just kind of visually, artistically, yes, um, tonally. There's a lot going on here. It color palette. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, there's a lot of grays, a lot of darks and stuff, but there's mm -hmm. also a lot of muted colors that should be you know vibrant colors, mm -hmm. and it's like. Like some of the velvety reds and stuff that people should be wearing yeah. are all very muted. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that yep. just gives it that sort of, again, it gives that air of heaviness to it. Mm -hmm. Yep, like, mm. absolutely. I think we lost Steve there, um, so hopefully he will be able to rejoin us uh, shortly. Say, I saw Steve flashing. Yep. It's like the name um, just flashing for a minute. Like, yep. oh. um, It's okay, he has a link. He can, he can rejoin us once he's figured out. Yeah, might be a computer reboot issue going on there. Uh, but yeah, this could is be the, ban the bandwidth bandit got him. Yeah, it could be. Um, <laughs> ah, okay. So I, I think we are getting a, a return, uh, there hopefully. Um, I'm going to pop that back in. We'll see if we can get that working. Say, I saw the audio um, connecting notice. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're For still... some reason, my yeah. video is not coming up. All right. Well then, um, uh, Steve will just have to be uh, a voice in the Steve. Ether. <laughs> Do you just be Steve? Just that's the right there. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Rocky with the Rose King definitely a uh, a surprise, and I would say just just go in expecting something unusual, <laughs> something remarkable. Yeah, I I think that for for the style and type of of animation for the mm -hmm. subject matter of the animation, mm -hmm. this is a really interesting. Is this a studio prestige piece? Oh yeah, good good call. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it is it's a, a fair bit different than all the other stuff mm -hmm. we watched. You exactly. know, where it's like, hmm, I could see somebody like stretching their legs a little, you know, mm -hmm. proving their chops on this to yep. be like, Let's look what we've done. Yep. Look look at this thing. Yep, absolutely. So um, we will we are gonna have to speed up a little bit here because we okay. have quite a few more anime to go to, and we've been going for uh, over an hour and a half. So. We uh, watched 10 hours of it, Brent. It's <laughs> true. Oh, well, more than that. Um, yeah. Yeah, over the course of the, the, uh, uh, the week. But uh, let us move yeah, on. I don't think we'll need to spend too much time on Rusted Armors. Um, um, I, if you can find ways to spend more time on Rusted I Armors, can. I, I welcome your, yeah. your, your input. I certainly can. Um, uh, so Rusted Armors is a, uh, an all-CG anime series. Um uh, which I, I really liked the artistic style of this. Uh, it had sort of muted colors. 
um, um, uh, definitely a lot of attention paid to that, to the overall yes. artistic style of it. Um, that said, we mentioned being kind of the, the shonen-y, shonen shonen kind of a, a show. Yes. Um, it's a group of seven samurai defending a, a remote village from soldiers um, with... From generic soldiers. From generic soldiers um, <laughs> with kind of over-the-top shonen weapons of kind of gun sword kind of things. Yeah. Um, so you're going to very much get that. Um, that said, I found the overall sort of use of CGI um, pretty effective. Um, like, I think they did a, a pretty good job of, of blending those things. Um, and so I think that, that, you know, generally worked. Um, uh, but it is, it's, you know, budget's not high. The budget is, is very much kind of just enough to get across what needs to be done. Right. Um, and it's just, you know, hot samurai dudes fighting generic soldiers, basically, is, is episode one. Which, as we had discussed when we were, you know, the, yeah. the, discussing this earlier, the idea that the budget isn't giant yeah. but this low budget 10 years ago would have been mind-blowing mm. for cgi yeah. you know, like so even the lowest end of cgi is still pretty damn good today mm. you know it, it's if more budget i would love to have seen what they could have done with more budget. yeah but, um it was interesting enough like again i just yeah the genericness of some of the the bad guy characters mm -hmm. to me you know i understand who the good guys are i can that's you know again pr who's protagonist going in this group yeah they are <laughs> uh who's bad guy the one that looks like it came off of a carbon copy machine you know it's just mm -hmm. the, the same guy in in armor that's it yeah. um so I, I, I think it's, it's lost me in that aspect. I would mm. like some more uniqueness in what's going on than just the specific character and then generic robots around them. Mm. Um, so <clears throat> I think if, you, if you're really super into trying to get a, uh, a good fighting show, mm. that's, that's where you're going to go with it. That's, mm. that's great. And I wish everybody well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't much of a fan of it. For sure. Yeah. It, it was, I was like, okay, this reminds me of Band of Seven from Inuyasha. All right. Mm. <laughs> that was pretty much it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Fair enough. Um, yeah. I think it's kind of, it is what it is. Um, nothing, nothing too crazy one way or the other. Um, let us move on. That, that's one we were not able to actually uh, uh, get a view on. So instead we're going to talk about um, Sabakui Bisco. Um, mm. Another shonen -y anime um, um, set in a sort of post-apocalyptic uh, environment um, where uh, humanity is living in this very sort of depressed urban environment um, and folks are kind of doing their best um, uh, despite everything uh, going on. Uh, John, I think, made the perfect um, comparison to Doro Hidoro. I think, you know, conceptually very much in that, that, that vein. Um, also very interesting structurally, the first episode, in that you don't see the main character until the very end, um, yeah. basically. Uh, and it's just kind of all these other stories going on that's kind of explaining some stuff around the world um, and what, kind of what's going on before you actually get the main character and some, some explanations about what's going on in the world. There's actually not too much here to kind of to explain. Um, I think just artistically, um, it's... Um, got a um, uh, again a, a lot of attention to kind of a, a, a fairly standard but, but fairly muted color palette. Um, yes, where it's it's, it's more um, relaxed and more chill kind of visual style. Um, and uh, but uh, yeah, there's clearly a lot of like shown in action coming down the road. This is just more yes. kind of setup of the world. Yeah, and I. I... I really enjoyed the way that they laid some of the groundwork for things. Mm -hmm. um, I like that there is some some switching back and forth of the the sort of sort of semi simultaneous kind of things going on. Like yeah. there's a scene with the with the gate guards. Mm -hmm. It's obviously daytime, right? Versus mm -hmm. like this other part of the story is taking place across like different times of the day. So you're not mm -hmm. entirely sure whether you know where is this happening? Is the mm -hmm gate daytime the first part of the same day 
is it you know wh- right. you're not sure what where you are in time but it's like it's building this world bit by bit there's things going on at the periphery there's things going on at the heart there's you know characters going on there's events that are developing um and i it it's got me because i loved doro hey doro it's got me for this idea of the oddities of what's going to happen yeah some of the little bit of what you see by the time you're getting to the end of this first episode it's like this is kind of weird there's mm-hmm. some weird yeah, stuff going definitely. on and how weird are we gonna go Doro yeah. hey Doro was insanely weird mm-hmm. <laughs> and this uh, there could be a a really good lot a good chunk of weird going on here yeah. and as I told you guys it's got Kenji Rosuda mm. who did Copcraft he did Mao Sama Retry he's the governor of you know Neo Tokyo or whatever the city is, mm. um, and I just adore his voice and the mm-hmm. way like uh, Goku Shufudo, the house the way of the house husband. Okay. That yeah. I just love his voice, mm. and I haven't really run across yet. Touch wood, I never do. I haven't run across yet something where he's committed to voice acting it, and I haven't liked it. So that's like for at least for me, that's like that extra plus. It's like he seems to have a fairly good taste mm. in the characters that he does. Mm. So that's got me like, okay, give this one a ride. Let's see where this goes. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Uh, Steve, quick thoughts on Sabaku Disco? Um, I just like the giant mushrooms. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> No, it was I actually I really dug the music. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was a lot of fun, cool. and um, and uh, you know that was that was pretty cool. Um, and uh, I just like the absurdity of it, the the bunny rabbit wounds. Yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> so unfortunately, I have no idea what's going on with my camera. So okay, fair enough. I have, I have no, no idea what's going on here. No worries at well, all. Well, we we know what you look like, Steve. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the richness of your voice and your singing when the yeah. time comes well, well, that yeah. makes the difference. Yeah. yeah, there you go. This is I, I just realized this is such a Shonen Jump anime. Okay, right. Like the, the, this is a this is Bleach, Naruto, Kenji. You know, it's 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 very much that that thing, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, to me very much. Um, anyway, um, let's move on from that to um, a very different anime because that's what happens when you're dealing with things from uh, um, alphabetically. Uh, Sasaki and Miyano. <laughs> oh, yes, this one. Yeah. Um, which is BO, just straight up BO yeah. anime. Not um, even like disguised. I mean, it's like yeah. full on yeah. mm-hmm. out there. Yeah, um, and um, I would say this is kind of also classic sort of BL visual style. Um, mm-hmm. You know, pa- a lot of pastel colors, very um, soft art style to it, and right. um, it's just two guys getting to know each other and developing feelings for each other. That's all it is. Plot-wise, there's nothing bigger going on. There's a little bit of drama, a bit of melodrama, some stuff going on in one of the characters' lives, but like nothing, nothing crazy. Um, and it's just this very sweet story of, of these two guys developing feelings for each other. Like there's there's not a, a huge lot more going on, but a lot of attention to detail in terms of like facial expression. Like facial expressions on here are actually like really spot on. Um, yeah, I really appreciated how like you you really understood what the characters were feeling and and talk and being um and just yeah just a you know, kind of classic sort of shonen i bl kind of a, a thing to me yeah i mean there i don't have the sense that there's a looming greater thing that's going to you know pull them apart and it's going to be terrible and stressful <laughs> no i mean it just seems like a very nice um sort of like my love story okay you know when it's like where you had the the big male protagonist and the tiny little female protagonist mm. and it wasn't this you know, hot and heavy romance. No, it's just these two people like in a slow dance to try and figure out how they connect to one another. And it's like, mm. this is that entirely. Okay. These yeah. two guys have, you know, they're, they're attracted to one another and they're just trying to figure out where, how they connect together mm-hmm. and how, you know, moments that happen where it's like, Hey, are you hurt? Do you need a band aid? These just mm. nice, quiet little moments where it's like, 
you can see where, oh, that, you know, I feel kind of touched by that. You actually cared about how mm -hmm. I felt. And, and, you know, you're sharing with me something about your life mm -hmm. that I can get to know you better. And it's like, it's just a really sweet story. And if you're into to BL stuff, then this, I don't think you're going to go wrong with it. I don't yeah. probably guess it's going to be that exciting. Mm. But, you know what I mean? It's just a gentle kind of story. Yeah. Steve, any other Steve. thoughts on that? He's still there. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm having massive computer problems here. Oh, right okay. Now. Um, right. So, uh, it's, um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I was just appreciative of the fact that it wasn't like, you know, boys having to have magical powers and fighting and then finding love. I think it was just <laughs> nice having, yeah, I mean, just, you know, just, uh, very grounded. Yeah. Yeah. Full on friendship, the magic of love. No, 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 yeah. no. no giant robots. Just, no no giant, giant robots. robots. Yeah. Exactly. Just people living their their lives and, yeah. and how attraction works and yeah, what that results in. That's like exactly. yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, let's move on to she professes herself pupil of the wise man. Um, another yeah, a lot of anime this 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 season this where the episode one is clearly just set up. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, that is all this is. So set in the MMO, main character is mm, Gandalf. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he set up some stuff as and, Gandalf. And not even pretending to not be. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, absolutely. It's like... um, and so there's there's stuff, there's sort of politics going on in-game in of, of uh, uh, fighting between various factions. The, the, the players have set up different, uh, different kingdoms, and there's fighting between the various kingdoms. Um, and the main character has... Uh, um, is called into battle to defend the kingdom, which he does, against really rough-looking goblins, CGI goblins. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the CGI in this just really does not match very well with the, uh, the 2D, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But it's okay. But the, the, the Death Knights and the Valkyries that he calls... Yeah, seems fine. They did... I mean, like, what did you guys do with the Death Knights that you couldn't have done with the goblins? Mm. <laughs> But, Very weird. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Stylistic choices were made. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and then something happens. Um, and um, clearly him uh, wakes up as a girl. Um, no spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, because we don't know either. Um, he yeah. wakes up. And we then get this, like, three-minute dialogue-free scene of the character... <laughs> Walking around, trying to figure out what's going on, um, trying different foods, you know, um, getting dressed, getting new clothes, all this various stuff, um, and kind of figuring out and reestablishing kind of what's going on apparently. But like, there's we have no idea what's going on. We're just experiencing it through the visuals of what must be going on, which I, I loved. Um, yeah. Love this stuff. Um, yeah, it was a brave choice to not have the. Who am I? What could have happened? <laughs> Where am I now? What is that thing? It's like, mm -hmm. that's a, I mean, honestly, considering that's normally how it's done, mm -hmm. there was, this was a really stylistically brave choice. Absolutely. Because you're asking people to put themselves into it more and be like, oh, the person must be feeling that. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they, oh, I, they, wow, how, how much don't they know? Yeah. She, you know, she's doing something that's unusual. Wow, there really must be like a mind wipe here. Yeah. And it's like, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, you've included us in this process yep. of this person who doesn't know what's going on, and we're sharing that like, huh, what would you do if you didn't know? It's like, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. It's kind of a nice Absolutely. helping me come along with the story. Yes. Treat the audience with respect. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> It happens every once in a while. Every, every once in a while. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's kind of hard to, to judge based on this first episode because of how much setup it is. Um, yeah. But definitely, art style is very classic sort of anime art style. Um, uh, perfectly fine in terms of, of animation budget and so forth. Um, nothing to complain about there. Um, so kind of, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely on board for more how it's happening. I thought it was really interesting where you had um, 
some character interaction before the transformation occurred, mm-hmm. yeah. and you meet some key key characters in in that process. That afterwards you see highlighted during that mm-hmm. non dialogue mm-hmm. section, mm-hmm. and it's like that's you know part of the the interesting thing. It's like it felt like they're communicating that there's been a change of status in the in in Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> in in Dan, no Dan 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 and the only thing that's similar is this robe, mm. and everybody that we've been sort of introduced to has no idea. This person's not on their radar, so it's like mm. that's a you know it's, it's communicating to you that's like things really are different. It's not just mm. hey suddenly I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yet, oh, I could detect your magic power. Oh, mm-hmm. sir, what happened? Mm-hmm. No, it's like these people who know this person have no clue. They're near this person, and it mm-hmm. doesn't even uh, come up on the radar. Yeah. So it's like, thank you. Mm-hmm. Now, episode two. Why don't we get on with what we're doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> Fair. <laughs> where's the story gonna go now? Thank you. Mm-hmm. We're we're all here. We're on board. Yeah. What's gonna happen? <laughs> exactly. So I, I look forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, any thoughts? Uh, it was okay. okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was it, it, to me it was just another kind of sword and sorcery kind of fantasy mm-hmm. kind of thing going on. But uh, but yeah, it it was fun. But I I was very flummoxed with the three minute no sound. Oh okay. Thing thing going on. I I I was just like okay okay got it experience exploring the world. But I don't know. It just it just didn't it just didn't grab me that well. Okay, fair, fair. You didn't fall asleep during that three minutes, did you? See? No. <laughs> okay, good. No, I was still there. <laughs> a show that some folks might fall asleep in, but uh, for but I certainly did not was a Slow Loop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, because this is the fishing anime of the season, uh, the moe fishing uh, anime of the season, which then, like sixty seconds in, just drops the seriousness on you. As you discover that she fishes because her her deceased father yeah. taught her to fish, um, and he's gone now, and she now kind of fishes uh, to uh, um, well for any number of reasons, um, but it's sort of her connection to her dad. Um, oh, he fell into the breakwater, was eaten by a tuna, and she's every day trying no. to catch the tuna to bring her father back now. <laughs> Um, that would have been an interesting premise, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and then, of course, uh, another girl shows up who is interested in fishing. And so they start uh, interacting and, uh, and getting together. But, yeah, I mean, this, this is definitely... Seriously? Go ahead. So, uh, sorry, Steve? You there? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I, uh-oh. uh-oh. We have lost Steve again. Um, yeah, it, it's... It's definitely Moe Girls Fishing. Like, yep. that, that is the thing. And this, this is very much the style of it. Very soft. Um, quite, a, quite a significant animation budget, too. Like, there's quite a bit of movement. There's quite a lot of you know, cute, yeah. cutesy anime stuff. Um, it's nice, clean animation, too. Yeah. There's not, like, a lot of, you know, kind of like, oh, you cheaped out on some of this detail, mm-hmm. cheaped out on some of that. It's like, it's, it's very, very solid in its animation yeah. budget. Absolutely. Um uh, a lot of fun and a fair amount of technical detail about fishing um, yep. but also like there's a lot of like fairly serious stuff about like kind of dealing with loss and yeah. uh, dealing with uh, just everyday life now um, other things are different uh, which I really appreciated I did not think a show like this would, would go in that direction uh, but it's 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 really lovely, um, and there's other stuff that happens that I, I don't want to spoil. <laughs> right, there's some yeah. plot twists here, which are fun to experience. But well, I, when we, when we had talked about this initially, and you were saying, "Oh, it's another fishing show," and I kept thinking, "Oh, our days at the breakwater. Mm-hmm. This is going to be like I loved that show. It was all about you know, fishing, just yeah. fishing, mm-hmm. and like t- you know, itty bitty details about the girls' lives. But it was like mm-hmm. mostly about them coming together as a group and fishing." So, I when this started to like develop, I'm like, I, oh, I thought I was just gonna get a relaxing fish show. I, I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was gonna have like anything to think about. Yeah. Yet. 
<laughs> but it didn't that the way that it developed doesn't take away from the fact that the fishing part of it is still kind of that same relaxing. Yeah, you're right. You're learning a bit a little about fishing, you're learning about casting, you're learning about these things that gives you that mindset for protagonist John. Mm -hmm. Where it's like she's doing this as not only a connection to her father, but also is a thing that she can focus on mm -hmm. that helps her quiet her mind and makes her feel at peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like you know, you've got these developing heavy things, mm -hmm. and then that provides that like, now let's relax. Mm -hmm. You know, these yeah. things are these things are going on. These things are happening. These, let's relax. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, events at home, and mm -hmm. protagonist Chan leaves the house, and she goes to the breakwater where she would fish, and new friend brings the fishing equipment mm -hmm. because you know there's that. I know you're coming here because this is your, your quiet place. Mm -hmm. This is where you go to like center yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I, you know, I'm wholly on board with this. I, I loved a lot of the background stuff and I, I enjoyed, you know, learning more about fish and mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it's just, it's nice all the way around. And I, I feel it's going to be a really good ride all the way through the end. Yeah. Well, hopefully. We'll, and I think we'll Steve's see. back. Steve? Steve. Trying to be. Ah. Trying. There's a voice in the darkness. Steve, thoughts on Stolu? <laughs> um, so when I started watching this, it, I was just like, okay, I'm trying to, um, you know, see if... Ah, dang it. Dang. Uh, Steve's computer is not going to allow him to have an opinion tonight, sadly. No. Sounds like. Um, uh, so, unfortunately, we will have to move Mosey right along. Um, away from, uh, away from fishing, to golf, um, <sighs> and Sora Iro Utility, which is just quite simply a golf anime, um, moe golf anime. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, it's about three teenage girls golfing. Not a round of golf. That's what it is. And. It will, it makes me want to now, and we discussed this. I now want to see a golf anime. <laughs> mm. You know, and as, and as I said, you know, having you know, a buddy of mine from school who's who was Japanese, was wildly mentally into golf. Mm. It's like it, they're so easy to get people on board with this because it's the beautiful vistas of the golf course. Mm. It's got that sort of slightly Euro camp kind of thing where it's like when you're on a golf course. It's you and a lot of quiet most of the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. It just well landscaped, manicured lawns, mm -hmm. and just you're outside. You're mm -hmm. outside enjoying what's going on. And it's like, I, you know, got these funny moments of where there's teeing off and how things go. But you get this beautiful vista mm -hmm. of like what the golf course looks like. And they're just experience being there. It's like, oh gosh, I want to see more of this. <laughs> this seems to me like this is really something that should have been an anime farther back in time because mm. of Japanese love of golf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure does seem like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it, it does exactly what it says, it says it'll do on the tin. Yeah, it's, and it doesn't bog you down in any kind of like exacting golf, you know, true. this is how yeah. you should do your swing, you should mm -hmm. do your handhold this way. It's like, it doesn't bog you down on that, it just gives you this a, a great ride for three people playing golf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is 14 minutes long. Uh, so it, it's basically a TV movie, FYI. Um, so there's, yeah. it's not a series. They just they were only able to, to do this. Um, but yeah, I think that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, so moving on uh, to the strongest sage with the weakest crest. Um, and... Um, this is, again, sort of a fairly generic fantasy anime, um, at least in terms of general tone and style, uh, where you've got um, um, uh, uh, characters with crests that they use to do powers, uh, to do spells, uh, and the main character has uh, essentially reincarnated to have a, another crest and is uh, now exploring to figure out what's, what's going on with that crest. What's kind of interesting about this one is that there's actually quite a lot of like world politics in this one. 
Yes. Like, there's a lot of like yeah. how the world works and and all that kind of stuff in this one, and and the fact that there's apparently a conspiracy going on. Um, but basically, the, the the main character and his friends are all um, uh, taking the exam to become, I guess, well, like uh, students in, in in an academy um, yeah. at the age of twelve. Um, so if all twelve year old protagonists, just FYI. Um, Swinging blades around, yeah. like wacky, wacky kids that they are. Exactly, <laughs> um, and getting into like uh, magic fights and so forth. It, it's a little, little, little worrying that way. Um, but uh, but as we, as we discussed, you know, they're they're middle aged in their world. <laughs> <laughs> like, how many twelve year olds make it to like twenty four by the with after swinging this much steel around? <laughs> Not many. <laughs> Um, so yeah, again, very standard, um, and generic, not in a bad way, but very much a, a classic sort of fantasy anime, um, um as we're kind of, uh, delving into things. Um, so I think if that interests you, you'll get exactly that. Um, but otherwise, like, nothing, nothing too, like, uh, that, that nothing really stood out to me a lot with this anime. Uh, I guess, I will say that the one nice thing is that, like, there was nothing in this anime that was, like, that stood out to be, like, objectionable or weird. You know, right? There was no jerk character. That I was like, oh, did they have to have that character in there? There was nothing. You know, none of that weird stuff. There's no fan service. None of that weird stuff. Um, uh, for this kind of premise, it's just very much fantasy, anime. You know, sort of fight combat with some politics stuff. Kind of setting. Yeah, they world. they tweaked a little the how he gets into this world mm -hmm. because this really entirely reminded me of the um, wise man's grandchild okay where you had protagonist kun and he meets you know pretty girl and it's like very obvious where that's gonna go where she mm -hmm. places in his life okay this is the same basic formula okay sure turn around meet pretty girl and now you know where she's going to be in his life Welcome to, to love interest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, there's a lot to be said for getting that out of the way. Mm -hmm. So you don't have 50 girls that are all right. like, oh, you're so great. <laughs> Who's he going to choose? It's mm -hmm. like, no, you've, you've, you've sort of crossed that bridge early on. Yep. Did you need to? Because the point that he makes of what he's trying to do, doesn't, mm -hmm. that's not really all that pertinent. You know what I mean? It's like he's got other things on the on the plate that are going on that seems like much more important. Mm -hmm. um, there are some wonky moments of animation. Uh, some of what you've shown, there is a, the scene that I talked to you about when it flashed by, where animating uh, love interest talking to the protagonist, good the way that they animated her legs and coat and drape and everything. Mm. When I saw that. I, no joke, I finished watching the episode, I got up to go get like, a cup of coffee or go get something, and as I walked downstairs, I'm like, you know, the way you, you move your jacket to have the sword hilt available and the way that the, the uh, scabbard pushes your jacket out, that was not done in a way that somebody understood how you hip a mm -hmm. weapon mm -hmm. and have to withdraw it. Okay. It was done like the whole thing draped just like a shell over over her lower back and mm -hmm. upper thighs. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, technically, that annoyed me, but literally that was the only point. Okay. Like, yeah. I think everything else was animated in, in perfectly decent style. Mm -hmm. Everything is is a, it's nicely done. Um, yeah, I think anybody could ask for, you. wow, you could have plus this if you had twice the budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the facial definition on people, mm -hmm. it's fine. You know what I mean? The stories, there, there could, I think, could be some very interesting political aspects of what's going on in this. Certainly going to watch it through. Mm. Um, I would be very curious to see if they take love interest and don't go that direction. That would mm. shock the living hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Make me appreciate the show maybe a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to you know. find out. I'm going to watch this through. We'll see what happens. Fair enough. Um, moving on to a uh, uh, longer anime, uh, Tokyo 24th Ward. So yes. this is a double episode, basically. It's a 48 minutes um, uh, uh, long episode. Um, and this is, there's there kind of a lot going on in this in this episode. Um, yeah. Which I, I think it's kind of both its strength and its weakness in the sense that, like, this is 
um, tonally hits a lot of different uh, styles and a variety of characters. Uh, the characters are fairly stereotypical, and again, I don't mean that in a bad way, but kind of very right. traditional kind of anime characters. Um, easily accessible characters. Easily types. accessible, exactly. Um, <laughs> you've seen a lot of anime, like you'll 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 get it. Um, yeah. And um, set in a a uh, near future of increasing automation um, and the potential problems of that um, uh, uh, in the story, the three main characters are dealing with the fact that they're um, uh, they had a situation in the past where they tried to. There was a, a fire. They tried to kind of save somebody in the fire, and somebody died during that fire. Um, and uh, that's kind of hanging over them ever since. And that becomes kind of the key to what's going on in this story because they all basically become uh, superheroes um, as yeah. the story progresses. <laughs> um, and they get, the, they get abilities to kind of save the day. And I won't go into it much, too much more detail than that because I think that's kind of part of the, the fun of the episode is getting to experience kind of what's going on with them. Um, right. But it, it's very much, okay, teenagers get these powers and are, and are, and are well, powers, and uh, and do that. The art style is, again, very standard modern anime art style, um, standard color schemes, fairly bright color schemes uh, for all of that stuff. Um, and uh, it's weird because it is very much a, a pilot episode. You know, we're yeah. setting up the characters and what's going on and so forth. So um, a lot of attention to detail in terms of, like, transitions are very unique. Um, a lot of, of special wipes and things like that. But it's uh, it's just there's a lot going on. So I think it's one of those things where um, either you'll, you'll be into that kind of pastiche approach um, yeah. uh, uh, or not, depending on kind of where you're, where you're going with that. I could I could appreciate the, some of their mechanical detail, mm -hmm. you know uh, that shot that you have up there with the drone mm -hmm. thing flying around and the the Shinkansen, and you know I I can appreciate some of those mechanical details. Um, I again for the start episode, they're they're trying to really trying, they are trying to cover a lot of ground right there so yeah. that we can get when episode two comes that we can just we can be somewhere to go forth. Mm -hmm. So. You're getting development on three separate characters and like the things that sort of interconnect them, but also those three separate characters' lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you're drawing this large landscape and then establishing how they're connected mm -hmm. and what they're going to do moving forward. Mm. I think that some of the sort of what I consider to be a little more odd aspects mm. of it like mm -hmm. um some physical characteristics as a result of their transitioning to the superhero mode mm -hmm. um I, I i'm curious to know how they're going to deal with that what the you know what the meaning of it is going to be and how they're yeah. going to explain this moving forward um again it's kind of it's it, it's more on the, sh on the shonen side where it's mm -hmm. like i i i don't know that i'm invested in watching how the how the show is going to really develop mm -hmm. um i would want and i think we discussed this i i would want to see how people react to it mm -hmm. yeah. and if they watch a couple episodes of this and it's like you know oh this story really goes somewhere and it's mm -hmm. really you know they've they've kept up the the pressure and they've kept up the momentum and it's mm -hmm. really you know it's really developing I could see coming back and seeing episode two and three. Mm. Um, but at the moment, it's one of those where it's like, I like what they're doing mm. well enough. Um, it was an interesting ride for a double episode, but I'm not sold on it. Okay. You know what I mean? And it's like, I think if you're a Shonen fan, I think you'd probably be more sold than I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's also very much a superhero show in, in concept. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, 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 yeah, in concept. So... Um, if that appeals, then there we go. Right. Um, so there's that. Um, moving on to... Boy. Oh, boy. Um, Tribe 9. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> so, huh. I, I, I'm, I'm not even going to... So, so this is an anime set in a world in which conflicts are resolved 
through extreme baseball. Um, and when I say extreme, oh yeah, <laughs> yes, um, this is so over the top. This is just ridiculousness piled on top of ridiculousness. Um, shonen pop, you know, piled on top of shonen. It's just a lot. It is so much a lot. I thoroughly enjoyed it because you have to just allow it to be everything all at once uh, yeah. and to just be throwing everything at you. <laughs> um, um, the animation budget certainly up to par. The yeah. character design is definitely very distinctive uh, and different. Um, uh, personalities, hair. very distinctive. Hair. Hair. <laughs> yep. Or hair thing. Oh, like. boy. A uh, lot of hair in this show. Uh, very hairy. And it is our second, uh, it's our second sports anime. This uh, well, it depends on how you define it. Yeah, we have uh, uh, fishing. in technically a sport. Okay, I okay. That, yeah. okay. So, uh, so yeah. it's three then. Yeah, yeah, three. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, so on the one hand, I mean, you, you do have fairly stereotyp- stereotypical characters. Um, but, uh, boy, then they start playing extreme baseball. Um, th- this is not trying to be serious. This is not trying to be grounded. Um, the, the, uh, this is, uh, this is what the umpires look like. Um, so it is just completely ridiculous, completely over the top. Um, and they, I don't even want to say, but yeah, it is just pushed to literally to extremes. And so if you're into that, that's what this is. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, yeah, it's like cyberpunk baseball. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because it, it, with and it's not a spoiler to say this isn't baseball stadium baseball. No, nope. I mean when they're talking about extreme baseball, this is like, this is like, uh, it's like uh, uh, street hockey, like street yeah. hockey baseball mm-hmm. variety where yeah. you're playing this game wherever mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like yep. it's not any kind of organized thing in a in a stadium and it's it's insane mm-hmm. I and mean, it's, an, it's, an, it's an insane concept for extreme baseball Absolutely. so I, I think i again not being not being a big shonen fan or a super a super uh, uh sports fan mm-hmm. for anime i just like the ridiculous <laughs> ridiculous stuff going on and mm-hmm. where it's like i could i could laugh along with this and it doesn't matter i have no idea if they if some point in time they come out and like make true to life real baseball calls <laughs> and strategy i don't care yeah because it is just insane enough to be like i i want to see if you have a cannon that can fire a baseball <laughs> what other wacky thing will well, you come out with now that's <laughs> like, one of the reasons i want to watch more of this is where do they go from here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, how for do they the first top episode, themselves? This is pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do now? So yeah, I can't wait for them to be, you know, batting galaxies at each other or something by episode yeah. twelve. It's gonna be pretty insane. Or you know, somebody picking up like Tokyo Tower to like <laughs> exactly. slam a home run out of the, out of the galaxy. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't doubt they won't try it. This, Absolutely. Again, you're right. Yep. First episode, look at what they've done. <laughs> they are only going to go up from here, I have a feeling. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, boy, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, Until episode 12 when they teleport back to mm-hmm. Taisho Baseball Girls. There we go. Oh, we it's go. a crossover I episode. Would be, I would be so <laughs> into that. Um, a show I was not quite so into was Worlds and Harem. <laughs> now this is sort of a um, a copy over from last season uh, where they started the show and then very quickly put the brakes on World's End Harem to what was it uh, to um, production issues or something? <laughs> yeah, like like, like uh, review the production, something along those lines. Yeah, like, like, uh, analyze the production um, because. Yeah. <laughs> It's after 10. Um, the, uh, this is kind of a hentai without actually being a hentai. Um, 
It's a heavy etchy. <laughs> Very heavy etchy. Um, uh, World's End Harem, without getting into too spoilery, without getting like into too many details. Uh, oh, heck, who cares? You're Guy not gets, really spoiling no, it. No, I'm not spoiling <laughs> it. Um, there's it's pretty I, obvious there's what this no, is. <laughs> yeah. um, so basically, uh, Guy gets put into cryo sleep because he has a, a uh, terminal disease. Um, he lives in a post scarcity society. So put into cryo sleep. Um, he's going to come back five years later after his disease has presumably been uh, uh, dealt with. Um, and he comes back, and sure enough, it has been dealt with. Um, but. Things have changed because a virus has wiped out virtually the entire male population. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there are um, basically no more men anymore. Um, it's just women, and this has caused a massive disruption in society. Um, and the only way to solve it is by repopulating the earth using men just like him uh so yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's that it's very much that premise um and boy given that premise what a dull episode <laughs> it's basically just establishing this and building up the premise and kind of uh explaining all of this stuff very slowly to the main character who can't still can't quite believe it and spends a lot of time not believing it yeah. Um, Spends far too much time not believing Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, again, sort of visually, artistically, it is a very much standard anime, you know, approach. Yeah. Um, uh, animation budget is on the low to medium side. Um, effective enough, but nothing crazy. And, uh, yeah. Um, and then he, he faces the problem that he... He won't do it because he's already given his heart to another. And so he can't actually go through with repopulating the planet and saving Doom humanity. Mankind to death. Yes. So he, uh, yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, Kevin's Rise, they, they do start to address the gene pool question in a later episode. Um, they do, they actually do, and this is something that did kind of impress us. There's, there's a surprising amount of, like, um, answering a lot of the audience's questions about how this would actually work and why you can't just use, like, artificial insemination and things like that. Yeah. Um, so they, they do kind of think of that, that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, um, it's just, it's, that's all it is. Um, and there's Steve. Yeah, Steve, you came back My just back? in time. Woohoo! Um, you're back just in um, time. Yeah, some of their explanation of, like, why they can't use other methods mm -hmm. really does feel like... Oh, somebody, can we come up with a reason why that we can't do something other and we have to make this show? Yeah. <laughs> so like a little, mm -hmm. little self-justifying for existence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it, it's I, really, are, we, are we talking about uh, Hair at the World's End? Yes. Mm -hmm. It is wonderful. It is fantastic. <laughs> It's it's a much thing. Like, much like my computer, much like my computer crashing <laughs> on me. Uh being um, a hot mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There <sighs> we go. Boy. Yeah. So Jeez. yeah, it's 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 a hot mess. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <sighs> it's odd because this is a show. One thing I was I was saying the other day, um, and this is the censored version, so it, it's fine. Um, as a premise for an adult story, it would be fine. Like we get it. Yes. Right. Yeah. This is the setup you need. Fine. Right. But as a regular like anime, it's like a really dull idea. <laughs> like it's been done to death, yeah. sci-fi wise. Yeah. Um, blue blue gender anime. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's just there's not enough going on in the plot to actually kind of pull you in and make you care about the characters and all that kind of stuff. You know. But, yeah. You know why the all the girl characters are there. Um, so it's just, it's, it's just kind of, there, there's just not enough meat on the bones, uh, for this anime particularly. I think um, it would probably not be an, an unusual thing to say that there won't probably be a second scene. 
I mean, he should they, win awards. This should be a play on stage. Come on, this should be a radio <laughs> show. Pachinko machines galore. Everything. I it should be all things. To see the stage play. The happen. figurines. The well, figurines. Those, I mean, we, we know those oh, are coming. You know, <laughs> know those, those are coming. Are coming. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. But yeah, there's no I, question I, they'll, I, they'll, they'll they'll make money off this. That's not going to be the problem. <laughs> yeah, but there's just uh, it's not even one of those where the presentation of it is such where you can say, and I've said this in some other shows, it's like, ah, oh, I want to see how this is going to develop. I want to see where this is going to go. You know, what things are they going to address? Mm. It's like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. He's going to go on the search, and he's going to do his thing, and he's going to find himself, and he's going to make a decision about what mankind should mm. should not have, mm -hmm. and things will happen. And it's yeah. just like, I... I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like chomping at the bit to know. Yeah. <laughs> and and to be clear, the reason this exists is because there's over seven million copies of the manga in circulation already. Yeah. So right. this already has its popularity. It already has its fan base. Like I, I'm not arguing that. It's just that this anime adaptation just yeah doesn't really have the flash, uh, unfortunately for me. No. Oh, it's got a lot of flashing, but it's, it's just not. Uh, <laughs> Not so, where it needs to. I, I do. I, amend, like I, I do have to amend my statement. Thanks to, to Jay in the chat. I, I'm not as interested in the stage play. I do want to see World End Harem on Ice. <laughs> oh <Yes>. wow! <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, okay. So, there's, there's so I would I pay. On that. I'm so not much I, I would there. actually pay. <laughs> I think this. But would you and, really and, went front row? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, no. Runs back. Why? Don't you want to be in the splash section? Yeah, exactly. uh, God, yeah. No. 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 Um, I honestly think for as much, um, um, you know, 7 million copies in circulation, yeah. I, I really kind of get the sense you could have done this. And I, I, I might even said it at the time. You could have done this as an OVA yeah. and done like, you know, Shonen Jump and like, oh, this is the, you know, one millionth edition mm -hmm. in the back is a yep. special OVA DVD. Mm -hmm. That this that would yeah. have been perfect for that. Yeah. I mm -hmm. just don't see how you're gonna really, as an etchy and not a, a more mature audience content thing, mm -hmm. I don't really see how you're gonna drag this out like 12, yeah. 11 episodes. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get tiring. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's like I just... much like for the main character. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> It's it's already at the point where it's like okay one episode in it's like okay, yeah I know what I get everything that's going to happen here is you just change yeah. the face of the person that's approaching him mm -hmm. and it's going to be the same re repetitive thing episode mm -hmm. to episode to episode yeah yeah um, uh, I mean we, although I will say episode two does introduce some some new characters that I did not expect <laughs> <laughs> and some plot twists I did not expect. Um, so there's definitely like not it, entirely it, sure we plot. wanted them either, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's there, there's plot. Well, that's a clap for that. <laughs> that's the thing. Well, because watching this episode, I was and, and that is why like I, I I did want to talk about this anime because the the setup again, if it were an adult story, it would be like here's a setup and then this for the next three episodes. Like, we, we know exactly yeah. that the same thing is going to happen right. over and over and over. But that's not what this is. So there, there's clearly going to be, you know, 12 episodes worth of plot. Like, there's stuff gonna, that's going to happen because there's we're not going to have all the adult stuff happening um, based on where he's going. So I'm, I'm quite... I'm morbidly curious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How... How hot can the dumpster fire get? I don't know. No, that's the Let's thing. I, I don't think it's a dumpster fire. I don't think it's a dumpster fire at all. I think it is just a a very dull adaptation of mm. this storyline. Um, unfortunately, I think it just it just doesn't have the it doesn't have the excitement. It doesn't have the 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 interest to pull me in. You're looking for gravitas. Look <laughs> looking for gravitas. Yes. Yeah. I, it might drive me to look to the manga to be like you know. What what was what did they do drink. there? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what did they do in the manga that got that much circulation? Right, mm -hmm. you know that this is just yeah. kind of limping along with, and it's like, no, maybe that maybe that's where the key is. is mm -hmm. Looking at the print version, yeah. and it might be one of those maybe one of those things where just kind of the pacing of the manga with the sexiness is enough 
to just kind of, you know, again, just the right. approach. I don't know. It's weird. Um, we'll, we'll see when we do our, our wrap up and see how we did on right. the right? Yeah. yeah. How it goes. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Absolutely. That's a good question. So I'm going to really uh, quick pull up an uh, analyst. Um, and I'm going to search real quick. World's End Harem. Um, 95% acceptance rate. Yeah! Oh, it is still hanging at a 62%. Okay. Trying um, for humanity. Yep. So, so not doing too too crazy well. Um, it's interesting, again, man. Your your uncle does not read uh, manga much, and he enjoys World's End Harem. There we go. Interesting. Yeah. So okay. Might be worth checking out. Um, yeah. Who knows? Um, that's the anime of the season. That's what we've been talking about. Um, that is all that stuff. So yeah, it's been quite, uh, quite the season. A lot of stuff. Like I did not expect this season to have as many shows that I was. I'm. I'm really intrigued by, and I want to watch more. Yeah. To add to the mounting list of forever long shows that I watch. Well, well <laughs> you know, that's why we have cocaine. And on that note, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why um, I drink a lot of coffee. Is to stay awake <laughs> long enough to at least watch three episodes of something. <laughs> uh, that's going to have to do it for us for tonight. Uh, thank you all very much for being here. It's been great as always. Uh, we are going to head off and go into our... Um, uh, uh, go about our weeks. Uh, next week... We will um, start digging into some other stuff. We want to finish up our, our Makoto Shinkai uh, anime by, watch, by watching Wolf Children. Ooh. So that'll be our anime for next weekend. And we'll follow that up with a couple of Makoto Shinkai anime. So we'll do Voice of Innocent Star and then The Garden of Words. Um, that will be that. And then uh, keep an eye out uh, on March 5th. We will have OnCon 7. So we will have uh, more panels, a full day of panels coming in a couple of months. So that is on the docket. Hope to see you all there. Uh, otherwise, thank you all for being here. So yeah, so make sure to watch Wolf Children, more so does Wolf Children next time. And hope you have a great time this week. And we will see you next week for Wolf Children. Have a great one. See you all. Bye-bye. Johnny.